What's up guys, this is the last episode of the 200 series. Now we've shot 201, 202, 203, 204, 205, and 206. If you haven't watched those, go to ammonyc.com, click on the training link, and you'll see all of them there. So for this last one, we wanted to change a few things up. We're actually changing uh, the set, everything, and what we're doing is called live to tape. So basically, a lot of you have asked, can you shoot a full length uh, series, a full length episode, and sort of watch what we're doing? So of course, uh, we're gonna do that today. It's kind of fun. Um, we're not really gonna stop. I think the only thing we're gonna stop is if our cameras run out of battery, if our microphones run out of battery, we need to go to the bathroom or drink water or whatever. So I think we're taking a lunch break too, Larry. A lunch break too. So we're gonna be doing that as well. Now uh, let's go over some housekeeping things. One, there's camera one right here. It's gonna be a fixed shot. All the way over here is camera two. And then we have uh, two cameramen. We have Sully over there. Hello, Sully. And then DP, camera one, Ryan behind the camera. Uh, so we got a lot going on here. I'm trying to keep it as, as live as possible. As you can hear, we're taping up the car behind us. Uh, we've cleared it already. So let's, let's think here. The purpose of the series that we shot was to talk about the techniques or the mechanics of using a polisher. It's not like a, hey, you're gonna watch this one video and all of a sudden be at Kevin Brown level. It doesn't make any sense. You have to go through a training session. Um, and so that's what the purpose was uh, with this. So we're gonna really be talking about the curves, how to use the machine, how much pressure to put down. Here's a little bit of a catch and the interesting part. We've been at Drive Customs for the last couple of days. These guys are awesome. What they do is upfit police cars, meaning they put lights and, and, and you know, buttons and all kinds of, all the gear that's in a police car, they do that electrical work here. Likewise, they also do competition car audio, which is a whole other subject I hope to film one day, but it's crazy how amazing their, their uh, radios and sounds um, kind of reverberate. I sat in a car the other day and it was amazing. Anyways, um, Jesse and Meredith own this shop. And so we asked Meredith, hey, do you have a car that we can use? And of course we're using a 2013 Red Accord behind us. It was actually at SEMA. Now, the interesting part that Kevin and I were talking about off camera was, can we get Meredith, who has some experience polishing, but by no means is a pro, can we have her work with Kevin and I and sort of go through that learning process together and make the mistakes and ask the questions sort of as if you guys were here in the same room. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, Kevin, what's going on here? What's going on there? So that is a long way of saying it. We're not taking uh, any takes or any breaks really, uh, unless we run out of batteries. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think, what else do we have? We have Kevin Brown's uh, containment system over here, which we're gonna go into in a little bit. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's basically capturing the residue. We're gonna do some examples on this panel here of heat expansion, uh, something we learned on this trip, which is kind of fun. Uh, what else am I missing? Kevin, anything? We're gonna just run Meredith through the gamut. We're gonna inspect the vehicle. We're gonna do a test spot, and then we're gonna prep the panel, and we're gonna start teaching polishing technique, kind of like driving technique. We're not gonna necessarily go all the way through the steps to perfect every section. I'm more concerned about her learning the, the angle of approach or right. how to best utilize the pad in that situation. So it's not gonna be something we're trying to go for the 100 point detail. It's really, truly about technique, technique, technique. Right, and so on that note, what is your mission and your goal with this particular car? Because you have a bunch of ridiculous competition <laughs> cars behind you that are amazing. This is your daily driver, what's your mission? Right, yeah, I just wanna protect the car. It's been neglected for too many years, so just time to give it a little bit of TLC, not make it perfect. I'm not looking for like show quality shine, but to make sure it's protected, probably gonna do a coating at some point later, so we're getting prepped for that. Totally makes sense. Um, so let me make sure I hit everything. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, I think you got it all. Got it all, Talk okay. Ready to go. Ready to go. This. Okay, and then we gotta talk about this too. We have a clear bra here. So the first step would be walking around. Do you have your lights? Do you have your light behind you? Yep. I think I have my light and in my light, pocket. And then my tape. So, if, you know, pretending there's 50 people here, Meredith is representing the, uh, the YouTubers out there. Well, the first, first step, Yeah, we want to remember you're blocking the camera here, so watch your back. We want to do a walk around and just look for obvious big damage because big uh, while we're at it, learning to buff, we might as well take out some of the stuff that's been concerning sure. you. So I'm looking for gouges and, yeah, and right etching or anything like that. We're, we've got a lot of towel scratching and daily driver type of defects. I call love marks. You love your yeah. car, you're wiping it down. Yeah, and so I would say the first step is kind of just, oh, compressor going on, uh, is to kind of find the big things where you may run into an issue. You're going to put a piece of tape there because sometimes I feel like we get a bit of tunnel vision as we're detailing. And it's like you're running, you're running, bang, you run into that spot that you didn't, you didn't remember. So on, that's a little deep. Okay. It's not too bad on this side. 
And so what are we running into? What would, what would you consider this, just uh, swirls, marring? Yeah, I think this is typical of a daily driver. It doesn't have a lot of, it's a nice car. It doesn't have dings, it doesn't have gouges. It just has a lot of- Let me of see, Kevin, I mean, uh, Ryan, are you getting that in the, can you see that in your? Yeah, let's get in a little tighter there. Oh yeah, now I can see that. There's like swirls and what else are you guys seeing here? A little bit of deeper random scratches. There's but there's, there's one. This is, there's a few right here. Oh yeah, that's a nice big one, that oh, one. Oh yeah, look at that one. That you one. Get on that? Oh, that one's deep. So we mark it. Okay, there we go. Just be, we'll just be aware of that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're looking for. Stuff like that there. Thank so you. it's not like you're going to spend what two hours doing a walk around, but it's, it's a good idea to get a. Yeah. And we're also looking for things. We know this vehicle, but if we right. didn't, we would be saying, wow, there's some funny looking texture there, or it's unusually smooth and shiny there. Let's ask the customer about that. Right or let's measure it. Now, before yeah. we wash the car, we clean, you know, we gave it a quick clean. Mm -hmm. And now are we gonna, we're gonna tape these up too, right? Yep, we're taping up and then we're gonna, we're gonna do some, we're gonna claying and where we, where we forgot to do some of sort that. Sort of getting the paint naked as we talked about uh -huh. in the previous chapters. Yep. So we're gonna keep doing that. And Likewise, Ryan, come over here. On the front, while they're taping things, oh, there's tape. So we've already done the tape here, that's good. On the front, you can see there's PPF, but it was put on how many years ago? about five and a half now. Five and a half years ago. So that was right around the time when it started getting, you know, the PPF started to jump in quality. So my mind is going, oh, okay, let's be a little cautious here. Cause if you look at it in here, can you, can you get that on camera? No, it's yeah. one, it's swirled out, but it's, it's got a lot of, what would you call it? Not haze, but it it distort. It's a, yeah, it, milky it's, looking. it's milky milky. distortion yeah. as opposed to, okay, like paint here, where's a bit of reflection, obviously it's swirled out. So, okay, fine. But when you move to this, it's just duller. It's hard to explain. So the, it could I, be the, the top color or the adhesive, like you said before. Right. Yeah. So we're going to have to deal with this right now. Um, you know, Meredith would like to have it polished out, but she, it's still a daily driver. So it's not like we're going to rip it off and polish it because right now we're not going to put another one on. So that's something to keep in, keep in mind for sure. What do you say in terms of time for uh, taping? About yeah. another five minutes. Yeah. Another five minutes of taping. Four or five minutes, yeah. We're doing a minimal amount of taping. We're not gonna put it on every panel. I'm trying, I don't like to tape on paint and leave it there for a long period of time. I've had a lot of situations where I've removed the tape and have seen texturing from the tape or sweating underneath it. It's all kinds of things can happen. So I'm very aware of not leaving tape on actual paint for a long period of time. I'll do that panel by panel, section by section. But right. we know that we wanna protect these rubber pieces and there's no Nothing to worry about with those, so we're just going to do the minimal amount. I actually got an email from a guy. I can't remember his name. Hopefully he's watching. But he was doing a, uh, it was in Europe somewhere. He was doing a car, um, and every time he did the, the front lip, the plastic itself, when he was taping it, like the front uh, split splitter there, mm -hmm. every time he put tape on it, uh, it, it would market. actually pull the tape off the plastic, uh, pull the paint off the plastic. Oh, yeah. Which I was like, I, I've never heard that before. He got it repainted and I was like, okay, that makes sense. And then he let it sit for 60 days, put the tape back on, pulled it off and it pulled off again. I have to remember the car, but it was, it was some, it, was, it wasn't like a Honda or a Chevy well, or a I did a look Ferrari. into some of that because plastic bumpers uh, for a while there, you were seeing where polishing was being done and at times it would tear a section of the paint off. Right. I mean like a sheet of paper tear it off, including all the way down to the primer. And that was really interesting. Um, and, and again, there's a lot of expansion, expansion and contraction of plastics versus a regular body panel. Mm -hmm. So it has to be, the paint has to be very flexible, but, and even, and even today's paints, they're not using flex agent much because the urethane paints are so flexible and resilient and twisty, okay? But what was interesting is my friend, Jamie, the painter, where we've got the hood, I was right. talking to him about this and he was telling me that there was a, a section of time where they were having to change their procedure for pre-paint prep. And one of those things was to use a, a panel wipe at a specific temperature. Well, guess what? The temperatures he was talking about are some of the temperatures you can create using a rotary or a random orbital. Right. Because at that temperature, there was a gassing out or a leaching out of a solvent uh, from the release agent when they make the bumpers. Really? So imagine it. So when you heat the bumper up when it's being made. In this particular case. Like in the factory. 
And so the factory, they so have a release agent, okay, so that they can they can make the bumper and then I mean, pull so it out of the mold. Oh, okay, got it. Right? That was leaching into the... Actual structure the, of the bumper. Right, and then when they would go to paint it or reheat it, it would start to sweat and swell and they'd get fish eyeing and all kinds of problems. So they were then told, bring it up to this temperature, use the panel wipe, let it, let it flash off, now do your painting. And I think that a lot of that would happen with polishing was you'd hit that temperature and that would happen and the adhesion would just go away and you'd tear and paint off. Wow. So, so even today with bumpers or anything plastic, I'll do very, I'll do a couple passes, I'll wait, I'll move, I'll come back, I'll do a couple passes, I'll wait. I don't ever let the heat get up or the friction load where it's grabbing so hard that it tears. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is when we were doing the tests where we thought the expansion was just moving uh, vertically, I guess, north and south, we sort of had an aha moment literally on, in, within this series. We were sort of prepping the panel over there and thinking, hey, how can we, how can we demonstrate this? My whole mission with these videos is, oh, we can talk and talk and talk and talk, but how do we demonstrate it so that people at home can do it? And we went across the street to his buddy's place, that the place he just mentioned, we asked him for a panel. Sure enough, he had a... I'm just going to on the big one. It, all right, yeah. I figured... I'll just leave this one here. Yeah. So we um, went across the street, got that panel that's right here, so we could do some tests. And I want to sort of motivate everybody and say, you can practice. You don't necessarily need to practice on your brother's car, your you know little cousin's car, whatever it is. You can go to the, uh, the body shop, pick something up, and, and burn through it. Make a mistake. You know, figure out you know, these little edges here and, and burn through an edge here, burn through an edge here. I kind of equate it to maybe you're being like, let's say, uh, you know, you know me and my race car driving or wannabe race car driver, you know, these guys, it's sometimes okay to run into the wall because they figure out where that limit is and, you know, do it on a scrap junk piece of panel that we've been using for the rest of the, uh, the series. So the point of the story is we, we're going to do it later, probably when we polish, but we're going to heat up the paint and first measure it. Then we're going to heat up the paint and I'll have a heat gun, you know, so I can measure how much temperature, you know, how hot it is. And what's happening is Kevin and I realized that the paint started to go this direction and decrease as opposed to... We made to, a couple calls, Larry, too. What? We made a couple, we phone, made a couple calls. phone calls, including Jason Rose. We're like, what is going on? Why is the paint thinning out versus we thought it would just go north-south. So let's say if it was five mils, you heat it up, we'd go to, I'm making this up, six mils. Oh my gosh, it expanded. But in fact, the substrate the metal was actually thinning out mm -hmm. and sort of And we did down. discuss this uh, it, it, when you were generating the graphics and we're talking about expansion, but right. can you make it bubble too? Because right. that would indicate expansion in all directions. Right. But then we kind of forgot about it in the real world. We wanted to do a test and show it. And it's like, uh, we, we did have, it outside on your, on your We have a problem like because it's not showing what we want to show. <laughs> yeah. And so this is going to be difficult. And it was a pretty shocking moment. Right. But, but that's the reality is some panels expand one way or another. That doesn't mean that as it's stretching this way, it's, it's thinning out the paint because it's pulling it. It doesn't mean that it's not absorbing and swelling this way too. We just, we couldn't measure it because it was pulling it. more this way. Maybe we should have done, um, maybe not mills, but the uh, microns. microns to yeah. see if there's a, a little difference there. And we can test that. We can actually do that. And we're going to expect, we're going to expect to see it shrivel some because it's pulling but wasn't it the metal that actually versus the metal yeah the metal was pulling versus the four layers sure the metal's pulling all the layers right so it's not just the layers thinning out it's the it's because they're stretching like a band-aid so right? in theory or a, if, a, a, a rubber band rubber band yeah so in theory if it wasn't metal or aluminum right and you get that what if we did carbon fiber everything's going to be different D all right right okay. that's what i was yeah. sort of figuring all right so we've done our walk around We've done our taping. Well, not, and can I add to that? that, what? that you may not add to it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Talk about messing up your thought. Let's say we have a hundred micron and then we go ahead and do our test. We heat it up and it comes down to 95 micron. Right. But we know that the panel is going to come back to rest back to a hundred, let's say. It doesn't always work that way because this is a structure. So as it expands, mm. you know, any structure, steel wool, scrubby pads, kids toys whatever think of a structure that moves paint is resilient and twisty and flexible it has its own inner friction so mm. as it expands it contracts it's not always going to do it exactly the same every time right. it may take a while to finally come down like when you ha you have your car jacked up and you drop it and the springs and the, the tires right. are gripping it takes a while you got to move it around and drive it and it finally comes to rest right. at the normal ride height right. same kind of idea so even then if we start at 100 micron, went down to 95, came back, it might go to 102, it might go to 98. 
you don't really know. Uh, we could just do that with heat just to prove the point that we didn't even polish it. We could use a heat gun and show that. We didn't even polish it and it's changed. Right. It's so interesting. That, right. So, so that, yeah. that leads me on to the uh, paint up gauge yeah. discussion. Because right now, so in theory, we, you know, we've, we've cleaned the car, we've clayed the car, we're taping the car, we've walked around, we've put tape on the spots that you know, we think we need to have some concern, you don't want to sure. run into. We talked about the clear bra. So now I usually, and you know, we're going to have a healthy debate about this. I usually, if I have a paint up gauge, it's kind of like a, it's seeing like the whole landscape as opposed to being a sniper. You know, I don't know how to put well, that Well, part words. of it is if you started with a meter, you're comfortable using the meter. Yeah. I didn't have a meter many, many years ago. And so I'm very comfortable not utilizing a meter. If I have it, I'll use it. Right. Do I need it? No. Does it worry me? No. Right. For you, it's a comfort thing that, hey, I it's need a meter. It's a red flag thing. It's That's like, right. Yeah, if it's, I hit it's a another spot tool that says yeah. like, hey, there's no paint or there's two mills yeah, or something. But it's on not it. the like, end all be all. It's, absolutely it, not. You can't just go into the pharmacy and put your hand in the free blood pressure meter <laughs> and say, oh, I'm 120 over 80. Healthy. Good to go. Yeah. It's just, it's just one piece of data. Yeah. It's incomplete. So same kind of thing. Yeah. So what, we got four point and these are accurate, they're very accurate, but the paint is dynamic, it's always shifting. So these have a high accuracy point. reading, a rate. Sure. But the paint doesn't. Yeah, that, that's actually a good point. Yeah. So the, these are very accurate. It is saying what it, what it is at this current rate right now, but I guess the point you're making is that rate fluctuates. It's, and it's not like you're yeah. constantly having a paint up gauge on it 24 hours a day and seeing it go up and down. So you can't assume that it's always gonna be no. this. No, and you're not, and we've had discussions with a manufacturer and he's alluded to that fact that, hey, it's too dynamic right. to give you accurate readings, to know with, with certainty that you have removed X amount. Can you, do you have the keys to, or there it is, or to pop the door real fast? So typically what I do, at least in my little sure technique here, it's four them. point, unlocked? It's unlocked. No, it doesn't like you. Oh. Oh. There we go. All right, there you go. Let me just open that real quick. Just go so ahead. You, we cut it already. So 4.35. <laughs> so typically I go into the door frame. See, it's 2.26. I would like to have us tape a little go. bit around the door handle. So okay. let's try it again. But you're going to obviously so have say, to so 4 .3, make it so we can open it. 3.2. Yeah. Just use your skin. Well, you know what? No, 2. don't. 2.45. I don't want to so tape we're, it. Basically, we have pain. I don't know between. <laughs> yeah, two and we'll a half wait and do that as we need it. Okay. And then basically, four or five. So really, to me, that's normal. It doesn't seem like this car has been like compounded or polished like crazy. Again, there's an asterisk or a little mark saying we can't exactly take that for uh, you know it's not written in stone. But to me, if I was normally doing this car in my process, I'd be like, okay. There's, there's certainly enough clear coat on here. I, there's no red flags popping off saying like, yeah. hey, you've got your car sanded and polished. Right. Right. Again, just on this section, I haven't done the rest of it. And I know, my, I know my car's history, not everybody will. Yeah. So I know that it's only been So is what I'm saying, right? Time. Like you haven't like sanded it down to like... No. It's you've, only, I'm sure you polished it once or twice. One time, yeah. yeah so there you go. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good 4. though. 4.9. The more you can leave on there, the better. Yeah. That was a little low. Yeah, that, that's a, that's getting a little low there, but okay. 4.12, 4.25, 4.7. I mean, we're all on the board, ballpark here. Yeah. There's nothing, There's but let's have some fun. Let's see if this actually measures out. So if this is 4.8, let's see if we do it on the clear bar. Ah, see, this is one of those fun examples. All right, so if you do, let's do this as a, I've done this in the, in the GT3 video. <laughs> So the 4.69, so this is what the paint is uncovered. And then if you go on the clear bra, again, this is an old clear bra. So 4.7, let's call it, just for argument's sake. 11, so what's the math there? Somebody do it, Sully, math. 4.7, so let's call it five to six-ish. So that's six, so this clear bra is six mils. But you can see this, this is, it's actually got lines in it. This is, this is the cutoff point of when clear bra started to get like really good you know what i mean i was talking to you ryan well i can't tell you i forgot i was having a conversation with you and pointing move the camera up and down yeah so there's definitely clear bra on there it's about six mils so in terms of so you know i wouldn't say kevin and i uh, differ at all it's just you know i've been using this since forever and he's been doing this for 150 years and they didn't have these so i wouldn't call it I'm rely, you know, relying on it, but I, I kind of am, so I kind of have to pick and choose. I think his point is it's fluctuating so much that 
that isn't always correct. But for me, I go like, well, oh, it gives me an idea of what's going on. I kind of like open the door, peek in, but I didn't walk into the building. I just looked in and be like, okay, it looks kind of safe, close the door, and then use my eyes to, you know, do an analysis or whatever. So right now, what are you doing? You're just clanging or doing the wipe down? Yeah, we're just clanging right now. Clang. So again, we're still doing a little bit of prep before the actual mechanical part of it. Just checking my notes, making sure we're on schedule. Did you just do that, huh? Or did you do the whole thing? Okay. Yeah, so we're doing the wipe down and I'm getting crazy hot. So let me take my jacket off. Is that yeah. exciting television? Well, we could film that in slow mo. Now, have you yeah, played right. this? Because it's I had hair. really clean. No, um, well, that's just, that's just right. a little bit. Let's wipe down so we can do this faster. You guys wanted a live video, you're getting a live video. Of course, I'm glad that we taped all this tape around it, so now it's We're a lot of fun to clay. To work, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is we're going to revisit the panel because I didn't plan ahead and now I can't clay where the tape is. So why are we clay? We're going to remove any bonded contam contaminants. Mm -hmm. You see that? That wasn't there when I started. There's some color there. That was all stuck onto the paint. So yeah. Remember, in previous episodes, talk about that. In previous episodes to this two, it was the last one we talked about residue control. And so that's what that whole Kevin Brown, we're making up a fake name. Kevin Brown containment unit system, whatever <laughs> behind us that you just made, that's the whole purpose of clang. So it doesn't interfere. Okay. Now I remember. Do we actually have more clay? You want more clay? Well, if I can be helpful, I... Oh, here it is. Since you guys are done with uh, cleaning the car, we're gonna do a pat. Okay. Bathroom break already? Very smooth on the bottom, which is... Yeah, awesome. just the top. You did? Okay. A little bit of fallout, probably. Sits outside all day long, so. So at this point, you guys are just washing down the car, getting the contaminants off. Right. We're just prepping the paint so that when we do polish it, you don't have to anything interact we, with a lot of. Yeah, anything we can take off before we start to buff, it keeps the pads cleaner, the liquids cleaner. Some of the stuff's pretty hard particles, so it could actually cause scouring, mm -hmm. you know, bad scouring. Anything special because it's a California car? Anything well, bad? we live. Fairly close to the ocean, so our air, the air quality is pretty good here. Meredith, Meredith would know about yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Um, but right where we're located, we actually have a couple of pretty decent-sized airports. So That's get, right. You're right you over the, the airport. You get the planes overhead yeah. all the time. You end up with some environmental fallout. Certainly know that from filming here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. You do all day, that. every day. Not to mention a treatment plant right no, there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting smells and sounds, huh? <laughs> Well, several years ago, I did 14 overspray jobs right here because oh, they were repainting that plant and it came across and hit 900 cars. It was a booger. And it's epoxyurethane. Oh my God. It was a bad deal, but. You see all yeah. the spot there? I need a light on this side, but you see that? See, I'm mm -hmm. scout gouging it a little bit with oh, my yeah. finger. It's coming off. Again, clear, bro I mean, uh, oh, yeah, clay works on, sorry, I just took it off. So clay works on friction, not necessarily pressure, but one of the downsides of clay is, look at the little marring. Can you, can you get that marring right there? I'll try to dry it off. Do you see the little, the little marks I just put in right there? I, I see it in my eye. Can you get that? Where are we at? Oh, I see, I can see that. So there's, there's swirls. And then the marring I just caused because I kind of went after that little spot right there. Put your finger there so I can get uh, the focus. That side. Okay, yeah, I can see it. You see the difference between the swirls and the marring? So, I'll see, move your light around so I can see swirls. Swirl, need, swirls are the, the ones we've been filming before. Yeah, I need the light over here for that, the yeah. swirls. Yeah, there we go. Do you see the swirls versus the marring? Yeah. It's a different, so that can occur with claying. Does it matter right now? Not necessarily because we're going to polish it out, but if you were just going to clay your People, oh, I want to clean my car, I want to clean my car. That's kind of like my big thing. Clay is like going to the emergency room is my little analogy. You don't want to do it because then you have to correct that. Mind you, maybe this paint is soft. Maybe I clayed too hard. Maybe my lubricant isn't good enough. And we're back. Uh, we took a little break there. Now we're going to be working on uh, the back of the car doing a test panel. Likewise, I also have Jason Rose on the phone. He just happened to call in during the break. Say hello. <laughs> They can hear you. Say hello. It's a phone. <laughs> Modern technology. Um, wow. Yeah, so like I said, we're just rolling with it, and Jason happened to call in because Kevin's here, and we're doing a bunch of stuff. So anyways, test panel. Explain to us the test panel on camera, and we have 
our friend. Hey, buddy. <laughs> it's good to see you. You know, usually when Meredith and I and you are doing a project, we watch you on the phone, and now we are watching you on the phone again while we do the work. <laughs> I'm uh, remotely on the phone. Yes. All right, so talk, talk to me a little bit about, and then uh, obviously Jason hop in. Uh, what's the first step in a test panel? So we did, basically we cleaned the car. We've clayed it, we've taped it. Okay, we're done with that. Now we're talking about yeah, the techniques. Yeah, we did the visual inspection. We clayed it, it's smooth. Right. So now we're gonna do uh, a test run. We're gonna see how rapidly the paint is removed. Right. And, you know, and so, but before we even do that, I like to take the polish we're going to be using and the applicator. And what is the polish we're going to be using? It's over here. Let me Polished. grab it. It's on, it's the, on, on the, the table there. Cart, yeah. And we just. So this is important when you're doing uh, a car is to obviously do a test panel because we have no idea, you know, really what's going on. And to do, let's say you compound the entire car and you polish the entire car. Yeah. And right. then you just want, oh gosh, we didn't get the scratches out. Now you have to repeat the whole thing. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So this, this is the polish we're going to be using. Yes. So I'm just going to apply a little bit to a microfiber applicator and just, you know, we're going to work Meredith in this area. So I'm just going to apply some quickly and this is just hopefully removing a little bit of oxidation it keeps the pad cleaner it gives us a better shot of, of what we're actually working on I can see that it's going to remove some of that light water spot damage mm -hmm. and now it, you see that can you pick that oh, up yeah. that's a telltale that something is there either something is attached still that oh, didn't yeah. come off with the clay Absolutely. or it's a nick mm -hmm. and that is a nick yeah okay big surprise so look for that too that's another way to Use this just to double check your panel. Are you getting all this? Hand me a clean yeah. white towel. Yes. I can't see the nick you're talking about, but it's there. It's important to do the test panel. Did, did you describe what the importance of the test panel is? No. Why it, don't you do that for us? Indulge us. It's sticky. Yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. because paint mm -hmm. is a variable, the hardness, the defects, everything about the paint is a variable. So you can't yeah, possibly do the same procedure, the same product combinations on every single car. Yeah, you so a test panel, yeah. the purpose right, of it, it is really to right, identify right. what <laughs> what is best for this particular paint. Uh, so we're going to learn about hardness, we're going to learn about defect removal rate, and we're going to learn about uh, the porosity of the paint. So all those things that uh, are different from car to car, uh, the test panel is going to reveal what this particular paint likes and which product combination in terms of uh, you know compound and pad you know what this paint likes so the paint's gonna paint's gonna talk to us and tell us what it needs interesting so you just gave a little tutorial of what's going on with Great. that what tool you, what's next we're gonna go ahead and do a test run we're gonna do a single one-way pass gotta get that machine we're gonna set up Meredith with the uh, cordless yes we didn't talk about machines come over here first I didn't do that in the intro, I forgot. Okay. Here, hold on to that while I'm doing this. All right, All right so what we're gonna use is, Where's Jason? Where's my buddy? we have uh, first over here, um, the 15 millimeter throw with a cordless on the flex. Yeah, we do too. <laughs> and then we have the 21 millimeter uh, large stroke. And then Jason, uh, or Kevin, I'm getting confused with the two of them on the phone. <laughs> He's gonna use the uh, rotary, again, cordless. We're kind of um, jazzed out about the cordless stuff right now, so it's, you know, this particular time of the year is, or this, uh, you know, I'm talking about the cordless stuff. Yeah. The cordless is kind of the cool thing nowadays. It's here to stay. Yeah. And then, of course, we have a three inch. So, pick your poison here. For Meredith, use. because it's lightweight, it's new, it's neat, we're going to use this one. Random orbit. Battery power. I'm going to grab her a, a foam pad. We're going to start with foam because it tends to take away paint at a slower rate than a microfiber. Right. And if that does the job, great. But I'm guessing we'll probably end up going to the microfiber. Got it. I'll meet you there. Okay. Let's do that. All right. I'll hold this. You're, yep. you're, now, uh, okay. you're now on stage. <laughs> Why not that other machine there? <laughs> we, 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 what? what you, I can't hear. What, what happened there? We'll, we'll, we'll be using that machine as well. <laughs> That's a six. I know you love the Porter cables, so we'll be using that. <laughs> Clean pad. Brand new. Okay. Jason, is this the strangest call you've ever had? You're gonna start it's, you out. it's ranked uh, pretty high up there, yeah. I thought I call you randomly all the time with weird stuff. This, this one takes the cake, huh? The polish. Uh, not so much. Not on camera. All right, pay attention, right, listen, Jason. Pay, pay attention. attention Jason. We're using a polish, which has been engineered. 
are designed to remove paint slowly versus a compound which is designed to remove it rapidly. Doesn't mean that it's, it can't do it rapidly, it's just saying from the onset it was designed to remove it slower than a compound would. Do you agree with that? <laughs> I guess. That, that, was a, that was a question to you. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> All right, that went well. Yes. <laughs> oh, he, he was not able to see it? You, yo, you didn't see that? That was the polish. A polish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's continue here. <laughs> let's just do, uh, we're going to start with just a traditional method, doing a, to out how a to few droplets. Here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to show you, and then you're going to continue on. So we're going to do a single one-way pass. Okay. Just to see how rapidly things are being removed. And how, uh, what kind of speed are we going I'm on starting this? slow. What, okay. what we want to do on any machine, rotary, random orbital, sander, I'm blocking. My back. Anything is you turn on the mach machine on a slow speed. Okay. Now watch, it's gripping and grabbing, steering me around. We don't want that. So you right. bump the speed up until you have good control, and that's that's the right speed. Okay, you see that? Yep. As you bump speed up, the grip decreases. You drop it down, it increases. So pad drag in increases at lower rates of speed. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Low speed, oh, yeah. it's not skimming, it's steering everywhere. So you bump up to a speed that gets the pad gliding along smoothly, and that enables you to dial in initially for any pad, any liquid, any machine, any paint. Awesome. Okay, so you're gonna do a single one-way pass. Uh, actually, I'm gonna do it first, and we're just gonna move the machine along and see how much work's getting done. And we're going to wipe that. Now, I would imagine, since I worked here so much, it's going to wipe easily. Right. And then progressively, as I was going from left to right, we're getting loaded up with more and more dead mm -hmm. oxidized paint or paint residue. And it's causing uh, things to get sticky and harder to remove. But maybe it'll just come off well, because we did do that initial application with, by hand, and it actually did. So what do we see, Larry? It actually, a lot of... You did a lot of work there. Yeah, okay, quite so a bit of improvement so far. We might get lucky and just use the foam. Yeah. And the machine action, you know, obviously dictates how much it you know, adds to the cut rate. So let's let's go with that. Okay. So but the plan just, is to use 205 or uh, use polish and a foam pad? Yep. Yeah, this is a, a polishing pad, just a mid-range polishing pad. So I can talk about pads briefly if you want me to, but um, basically the pads has a few functions, right? Mm -hmm. It's got to apply the product. Everything right. does that. It's got to distribute the polishing energy, which means the machine motion, my pressure, mm -hmm. the weight of the machine, all of those things, if I tilt or not. So the pad has to apply the product. All pads do that. It has to distribute the machine, um, the polishing energy, right? right? The power of the machine. But mm -hmm. the most important thing that it must do is squeegee the surface clean. In other words, if I am working and then at some point that polish locks down mm -hmm. and now my pad rides on top of it and it's not squeegeeing uh -huh. the surface mm -hmm. clean, I'm not getting any work right. done. Okay, so that's, to me, this is the most important thing. So that way you'll know, can I use that polishing pad on this paint or with a compound? Well, if it has the ability to squeegee the surface clean and not pinch and bend underneath and grab and grip and, mm -hmm. and steer unusually, then yes, that's, that's a good one. You can, you can attempt it, okay? Finally, some pads have the ability to increase the cut rate. So as an example, if you compared foam to a, a heavy cut wool pad, that pad is adding cutting ability. Sensible? Yeah, makes sense. Anything to yeah. add to that, Jason? Yeah, so if you had done that test spot and you did, you, let's say you only got 50% of the defects out, uh, there's, a, there's adjustments you can make, right? Definitely. You can do another pass. You can bump speed up. You can add liquid you, or take it away. Depending if it's a slippery liquid, you would take some away. If it wasn't so slippery, you could add. So if it, if it has abrasives in the, the, the compound or polish, mm -hmm. well, if we use more of it, we're getting more work done because there's more activity from the abrasives, right. correct? All right, so per our video that, you know, I promised everybody, your okay. turn, get behind the wheel okay. here. I would start over there maybe and, right. and sort of... Do we need to add any more compound I think we polish do. right now? Yes, we okay. do, and we should clean this pad, but we're going to do it 
just for the sake of the video right now and because the pad blowout is across the room. Okay. So just so. a single one-way pass and move about inch per second. Okay. We'll stop about here. Okay. Now is it grabbing and gripping and steering? Should I bump it up? Probably just a little bit, yeah. There you go. Okay, now when I say stop, just stop where you're at. Stop, don't lift. Now, this is already telling us a few things before we even look at the paint. We're learning your technique. Mm -hmm. This is a six inch pad and it's got a 15 millimeter orbit. So if this was in complete contact with this, if you had this right on the trunk and it was a flat trunk, we would see six inch pad plus right. the orbit. So six and, a half, uh, six and a half to seven inches. What are we seeing? We're seeing initially the machine was off mm -hmm. and so it was at rest. And then when you started, either the panel change shape or your, 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 the way you're holding it changed. So in this case, you probably added some tilt this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you look at your pattern as you polish and that'll determine if you should add some tilt, which is safe to do. This pad is designed to be sure. cushiony and foam and contour or, or, or you don't need to. And so in this case, I would say the next time we do, do this, be aware of that and then make an adjustment, either tilt up and down this way okay. or So can you say it another right. way that the pad should be What's the word? Horizontal to the surface that you're. Yeah. So like if the, if the machine was up like this. Right. You know, exaggerating. You see how you skinny sure. this out. Hold that. Yeah. Let's see. Thank you. Yeah. So obviously, um, if we're nice and flat, nice wide pattern. So you right. can already see the side here. The size here. Yeah. yeah. That size. It's changing so, with my arm motion even. See the mm -hmm. size was consistent is, around here, and the previous one was this, was up. This helps to dictate. Hey, this is probably not reasonable. I can't keep. It's good at control. My, the way I'm, my body designed, as I went away, you can see it start to wiggle. I can't, I can't control it that way. Right. Up close, I've got total control. I can add tilt. You see how skinny? Mm -hmm. Or I can add tilt. You see how skinny? Or I can add tilt to get maximum width. So now you're perfectly horizontal. Yeah. Now. Yeah, Without losing the fact that we were doing a test pass, but we do already know that this removes rapidly, so mm -hmm. be careful. Uh, is this the right direction to even polish this? Why, why does it remove? What? Why do you know that it removes? Because I did a test over there right. initially, and we right. determined that wow, that removed a lot of the defects. Because we were using a product that removes defects, defects. slowly, slowly, and it did it rapidly. It did it pretty so rapidly. So in our mind, we're saying, hey, in we one used pass. A, in one pass, we used a, a slow. One that's slow, mm -hmm. meaning a polish, but I think it, we redid this for a reason so that it, it makes your mind uh, you know, think a certain way. So we, we used something that was slow. We used a pad that was a slower remover, let's say, yes, right? Yes. And after doing all that math, the paint came out or, or, or we abraded it quickly. Yes. So if we were to go to something stronger, it'd go even faster. It would Hence go faster the and, we're doing a test and panel. cause scouring Ex probably and more work and exactly. take off more paint. Everything so I know worse. we're spending a lot of time on the test panel, but like, to me, at least, I think this is one of the most important things we need to talk about because okay. I see a lot of people, oh, oh we, it's, uh, I do that all the time. The mechanics, they go like, first we're gonna do this step and then we're gonna do that step. And it's like, oh, did you do a test panel yet? No, 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 I just polished the entire car. And then you get back and you're like, wait a second, I didn't get right. any scratches exactly. out because hypothetically the paint was hard in that example. Right. So test panels, you know, I think are We've learned a lot already. Yeah. Now, without changing too much, I can tell right now that very likely for Meredith and for anybody, Instead of going across, what about coming up and back like this? And then moving this way. Oops. Now talk a little bit about the, about the eyes. You were, we were doing this again off camera sure. where, your, where your face is, meaning like if I'm polishing over here, I can't see where this, right. you know, this panel so is. So I try to focus my eyes at the edge of the pad. And, I, and that means that I, if I have a dangerous area, this ridge on the trunk, this spoiler, this, this panel, excuse me, I'm gonna move my head or get my body to the point so I can see the dangerous areas and I'm going to be right here and move up to it. This is why, one of the reasons why this is a good approach for this trunk. If I'm coming this way and I'm just cruising, I can't really see if I'm riding on that or grabbing dirt off of the rubber. Right. You know, all these right. things are going through my head to say, hey, I want total control of what's happening. It, dramatically decreases your risk okay yeah anything you with us you still with us <laughs> so <laughs> he just put a light on he's trying to see if it <laughs> so here's what actually happened i tried to call jason but jason is traveling 
because he has a life apparently <laughs> and he wasn't, he wasn't able to be here. So we uh, love Jason and we wanted to get him on the phone. So that's why we're doing it. Any other, any other parting words? Cause I'm getting tired of holding yeah. this phone. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> any, anything else? No, I just miss you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jason. Have, have fun. Bye. See you soon. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. Say bye. Bye. So that was fun. We wanted to get Jason yeah, on. He's a great so, guy. Jason's our man. He's our buddy. There you go. Okay. So we're doing, let's, let's wipe this clean. I want to blow this pad out. Ooh, you want to do the section on the pad blowing now or do you want to do it later? Let's talk about that. Yeah, because okay. we have done a lot of polishing now. Just playing around and showing you different techniques and things. It's removed a lot of paint. And right. so if we don't clean this pad, a couple things happen. That polish is saturating into the foam and changing its integrity or its design. Right. It gets a lot of liquid in it. It gets heavier. The machine can come a little more out of balance. Right. Um, the liquid is heavy. It, it, and the abrasives and the paint co by comparison. Right, right. And so that can cause uh, imbalance issues. It can cause the pad to drag differently or collapse. So a lot of reason to clean it out. Number one is the residue affects the rate of cut and the ability to finish it. Yeah, we talked about that in, in the later series of, of uh, the ATA as our number one thing, like mm -hmm. uh, what was it, polishing mistakes to avoid, was paint not residue. understanding the concept of residue control yeah. we really mm -hmm. talked about the wood, we kept talking about all that kind of stuff where, sure. we, where we vacuumed out the, the sawdust of the wood. There's the sawdust, I'm using air quotes, on the pad. But we're using clear sawdust. This. We're, right. using, we're working on clear paint. You can't see that residue. Right, and we have no vacuum. Remember the vacuum that was... Right, sure. So but, it's like... Because, yeah, in other industries, woodworking, as they sand away the wood, they get, hook a vacuum to it. There's little holes in the, in the vacuum, but yeah. it, it sucks up and removes the debris, the contamination the wood residue. When you're machining parts, you know, uh, you got a CNC machine, they're constantly flushing the debris away and filtering that out all the time. Right, in that previous episode, we didn't talk about how to remove it. So are you cool, should I pull the, the Kevin Brown, whatever we're calling yeah, it? Yeah, let's do that now. <laughs> so we're gonna pull this in and show how oh. to remove Jeez, uh, the residue control. <laughs> So are we, are we good on the test panel? Do you think we've covered everything? Right, we're going to do a need? final inspection on that, but we've already determined that we can do a lot of work with yeah. this mid-range and, uh, and if it didn't work, you would have done multiple, uh, more passes. We could do more or, passes. Or you would have gone to compound, or you would have changed your pad. We, we would have changed the pad. Out, you know, we would have went more passes, mm -hmm. made some adjustments to liquid, and then if that didn't give us a satisfactory result, we would change the pad and do it again. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure that when people Thanks. are watching at home, they're not yeah. just saying, okay, I gotta do one pass of polish, right. and then that's it. This just, the paint told us what it wanted, and that's what well, it wanted. And that's the other thing is, we, were, we did one pass, we would inspect it and say, hey, let's try another, it looks like it's working, and let's try another. And we would deduce by the third pass or fourth pass, right. we got where we want to, or hey, you know what, this is taking a long time, let's make an adjustment. But now you know in general, I can probably do two back and forth passes or three and get this car to look like that instead of five and six and seven passes. Taking more time, right. removing more paint, getting more residue. Everything's worse the longer we polish. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's pull this in. This is the, I don't know what we're calling it again. Kevin Brown <laughs> containment, whatever system. Yep. So it's... I know you made a whole crazy thing here, but what, what can people normally do at home? We're just trying to control the dust because we, we have to blow out the pads. It's just, it's just a given and, and it creates a lot of debris right. floating around. So we want to contain that. So sometimes we use a little trash can and a vacuum if that's all we have at the time. Yeah, well, we, we did with the McLaren thing. Right. That was like a weird yeah. little thing you built on the spot. Yep. Other guys I know, they'll take a, a big cardboard box and they'll flip it and they'll cut a little hole and they'll blow inside the box. Other guys put water in it, you know, all kinds in of a ways. five gallon bucket, blow it out, this just so one, it sticks. I had these fans, I have racking. I made this up last night. Mm -hmm. And it's simply two fans blowing down air and exhausting through inexpensive filters <laughs> for your house. And so turn them on. Right, show us an example. Can show you, you get? Can you? Are you able to see this in the light? With I'm gonna, the do, I'm gonna do a pump of water. Put it on stream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> I don't see any. I was waiting yeah, let's for that. See what we can get here. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's that Jesus. Now we're gonna do. We're gonna try to use this and keep the dust to a minimum. Will it right. get everything? Probably not. Right. There's no vacuum or anything, but. I have plenty of videos of shooting, uh, the, so we're using compressed air. Yep, 
and that's still my favorite way to clean. I'm so, gonna stand over here. Yep, I'm gonna lay it down here, get that pad going. Is it actually working? And then back? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. I can't really see anything going up, so I guess that's the goal. And that's it. Depending on the pad, we would do that two or three times. Microfiber, we would tend to have a lot more debris there because it really grabs and holds. This foam is pretty easy to release the material. So, okay. and that's that. Would you like this out of the way now? Yeah, let's put this out of the way for the moment and we'll go back to uh, bringing everything the way it was and get back to work. Lots to do. So you don't think I need to use microfiber cutting pad? Or just go straight to I I I think uh, we'll do a, a closer analysis to, to finalize that that's this is doing the job but maybe microfiber on scratches or something like this yeah yeah so yeah, maybe I happening. maybe I should do that maybe I should just focus maybe I'll take the three inch and just go hit all the okay the things while you guys are finishing whatever you're doing okay carry on yes yeah that did pretty good it did not bad. I'm going to do another run with it, okay? Okay. And then we'll get back to technique, but I want to confirm this is doing the trick. Yeah, we need to get Meredith doing something here. Okay. <laughs> Where's the three inch? There it is. <laughs> Helps if you open it, huh? Yeah. I know. Thank you. I just want to get a quick look. That light. Let's get some light on this, huh? I can see really well from here. So. That help? Yeah, tremendously. <laughs> I'm gonna come to this side. See, I'm watching this side now. I'm certain I can do that, but yeah. this is much easier for me to see and control. Okay, let's just see how that looks. Line myself. I need a fresh towel. This one's kind of wet. Get that light up there, Meredith, and let's see if, if that's... Wow, that's pretty good. Now, we do have some... We, we, yep. we could feasibly bump that pad up. And I think if you want to get rid of all the, I think that we, we would we save a little that? time if we did go to microfiber, Larry. Alt, oh, There's all together? There's a few deeper ones. See over there. here? I think we can clean that up, but. I mean, I think we can get it absolutely perfect with microfiber. That's why I was like, we're going to go two stage. And, yeah, you know, I think uh, we're going to try that. We're going to try and do microfiber all the way through. Okay. So I'm going to use, we're going to use a finishing disc. Right here. Oh. Uh, okay. Six inch. I'm sorry. Now, are you going to change inch, to. Uh, are you going to continue using the polish? Yes. Okay. It's working just fine. Six. There Switch. you go. Set this one aside. So basically we're, now we're switching one. the plan a little bit here because the polish made it look pretty good, but there are some deep scratches yeah, you can see or it. rids, mm -hmm. random isolated deep scratches. So like this one here, it's just not going to come out with polish. And so if you have a bunch of them, and you, you polish this section, it looks really good, and this one is kind of reduced. It's like, well, when I, you know, you've already swum halfway across the ocean, you might as well just finish the job. So I think that's And then that might work. in this case, well, we typically will prime microfiber because when you put polish there, microfiber is so good at grabbing and holding, mm. it doesn't migrate, it just tends to stay there. So we prime microfiber, specifically microfiber. Sometimes if you do this with foam, you'd get splatter or wool, you'd get splattered. It doesn't have the same kind of control. And in this case, because I want to get strategic, in other words, I want to see what I'm working on and then stop, mm -hmm. I'm not going to add an abundance of liquid. We don't have a lot of oxidation. That stuff we had, a lot of it came off with right. the hand. So I want to put a minimal amount of polish. So now there's abrasives in that polish, mm -hmm. micro fine, super micro fine abrasive polish or um, abrasives they're going to attach and stay in place mm -hmm. for the most part. They're going to move around some, but they're going to stay in place. That gives me high efficiency of transferring the machine motion. So if, if the particles stay in place, they're being directly driven mm -hmm. versus if I put a bunch on there and let it smear and roll around, you wouldn't get as quick of a cut sure. and it would be more difficult to see. So okay. what'll happen though, the negative is, is if we are removing a lot of paint, 
we got to clean out a lot more because sure. it because the paint residue buries the abrasives buries the strings you can watch the cut go down and uh, if you're going an inch per second and you're watching closely within two seconds you can say whoa it just quit cutting it, it virtually stops mm -hmm. so the example you gave me just to kind of come at it from a different direction is you said there was a hardwood floor we did this like two weeks ago on the floor mm -hmm. there's a hardwood floor and imagine two different things. One is you put a bunch of rocks on the floor and you go like this with your feet, right? right? There's, there's one and the rocks are rolling around and you're going like yeah. this. Number two is you come in and you get a rock stuck in the treads of your shoe yes. and you go like this on it. Yeah, you walk in on a slippery surface, you walk in from your gravel driveway and some of the, some of the rocks get stuck in, in your shoe and you make a quick stop and you slip. Right. All your weight is dragging, those rocks are staying in place and they're gouging right versus if i walked in and there was some pebbles or bearings or little marbles and i hit it there my foot's going to roll they're still going to create a ridge and some damage sure. but nothing like something that's been locked in place and drug so the analogy here is you are using the you're having it stick yes. on this particular one yes. where sometimes if it, you would over put a lot more quantity of liquid right and then that would be the other okay okay I just, to yeah. me i'm an analogy guy good so yeah i want to watch right here because that's Still hard, harder to see through, but I kind of count seconds, 1,001, 1,002, you know, I go in there, hold it, I'm going to come back, I want to see, so I'm going to, this is, this is pissing up against this section right here. Let's see what that did. much better mm -hmm. now there's a tiny bit left and we're seeing a little haze it's yeah. not as clear right. that is the effects of the paint residue right. and locking in the locked on abrasive so i'm going to blow this out quickly come back and not add anything to this just use what's left in there because there'll still be okay. plenty in there and we'll do just a cleanup okay. and see how and that so looks. just to reiterate here you're using a microfiber finishing disc as opposed to a cutting disc so yes when we were doing that like do no harm segment or do the least amount of aggression mm -hmm. I think I probably would have maybe just out of habit gone to the cutting because that's like my go-to. Right. Do you think if I would have done that in this case, I'm just trying to think out loud, do you think I would have potentially taken more clear coat off than was necessary? It would have taken off more rapidly, so you could have maybe worked a little less time. S slower, right. But those in that particular, in this system, right. there's a cutting disc and a finishing disc. The cutting disc has longer strands and less of them. so. As the you use disc them, has less strands, less microfiber strings. Yes, but they're longer. Yes. So as you turn on the machine, they flatten and drag. As opposed, like to a the... chain. Put a chain in the ground, and you spin it around. It, anything that's on the ground, it knocks right through it. Right. This disc has very short strings or the fibers, disc. and they're packed tightly together. They tend to stay more vertical. Okay. So in this case, yes, you would have probably got more cut, but you would have had deeper scratches. Got it, okay. And then the backing plate is different as well. Right, this is a softer foam, more contourable, so. So, let me see if I have a red one here. Yeah. So yeah, aren't, is one, uh, yeah, see the foam difference Totally here. different foam, you know. Oops, backwards. So different microfiber, different microfiber, and then different foam. Mm-hmm. Mm. I gotta be honest with you, I probably would've gone with this. Mm -hmm. I think you were right, I'd have more work on the back end. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of strings here and each microfiber string has lots of different uh, size, uh, size, sizes and shapes. sides it's oh, designed so, oh. to have multiple, uh, multiple surface area yeah like a star you know lots of little lot of, one right. string has a lot of juts uh, on so it's a lot of surface area working so it gets a lot of work done quickly interesting yeah okay let me blow this out and then all right that actually changed my mind a little bit there as to what i'm going to do yeah. What are you doing over here, Larry? Well, what I'm doing over here was normally, like I said, I would be using. Sorry, I'm actually thinking because that was interesting. Um, I normally would. My go-to is a um, microfiber cutting pad, like I just said. But even on camera here, my, I'm trying to think because I'm just learning from Kevin as always that this, in this case, it would have cut too much. I, I still think the microfiber cutting pad on something like this is going to be necessary because otherwise, I'm going to be with with the foam pad here. And it's just going to take me forever to cut through that. So I'll probably go with the microfiber cutting pad. But um, yeah, anyway, I guess the point 
of doing like an hour long, uh, you know, test panel is that you actually save a whole lot of time by doing this. Because imagine, put it this way, imagine if I just did the microfiber, my go-to, I walk in, I go, okay, fine, I'm gonna use the microfiber cutting pad. Like I always, you know, my typical, and then I use a foam pad to polish out. I would have, I would have thought that I was going in and saving time by doing that because I want to hit the car. I want to, like we've talked about in the videos, drop my bags down and attack the paint. But if I didn't kind of like chill and relax and, and take the, you know, we're doing it a little longer because we're on camera here and taking breaks and going to the bathroom or whatever. But a test panel, 10, 15 minutes or whatever, but it's like the most important 10, 15 minutes you could possibly do on the car because you get the whole game plan for the rest of it. So anyways, that's what's going on. Let's check it in an hour before we, or two hours. Let's, because there is some heat absorption, it causes it to stretch and swell, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And think about it, not just with heat, do you get this stretching and expansion and, and pulling of panels, etc. but you get absorption. So now we take a machine and we force our liquid. Mm -hmm. We're twisting under torque, under force, not just heating up the panel, but also moving the paint around. Sure. And then with liquid, and it's a porous structure, yeah. you could be pressing in liquid. Sure. And it, it happens on a microscopic level. So what I like to do is finish out my panels as well as I can get them, and then come back in a few hours, an hour, two hours, whatever, and let anything, let any you know, migration or, or um, contraction happen, check it again, and we might find out that we could just literally do one pass with and, foam, and, and it's dialed. Yeah. So okay. we would save a lot of time just waiting. My key is to buff as least as possible. Sure. I want to keep, because this, this has got keep a lot of paint out. on it still, and, yeah. you, and you've had it how long? Um, yeah, it'll be six years. Yeah, so that's so. You're doing a great job. All right, come here. So I just picked up this now, this um, polisher, and the cord was dirty, and I just um, put the pad on. Look at the pad. That's perfect that? example of working clean. So if you if you see Kevin, I don't know I don't know if you got any footage of him. He's always cleaning the the hoses, like the the blue hose right there. Before we got started, he was cleaning it. You know, I took a towel, dirty towel, and was you know like you would clean an extension cord. I just touched this. I don't know what I touched. But look at that pad. You, can, are you catching that on camera? Oh, yeah, that's nasty. Yeah, so now I gotta go blow this pad out because I just contaminated it before I even touched it. So like this residue control thing is such a massive concept. I say it 400 times because it's it's that big. It kind of changed my whole career, I guess. So anyways, I gotta go blow this pad out, which I haven't even touched or primed yet because I just got it dirty. Well, technically you did touch it, Larry. Ah, yes, I did touch it, yes. I touched it the wrong way. So now I want you to do, again, we're not, we are trying to get the car as good as we can as sure, your car, yeah. but it's technique. So what I want you to do is find an area of the car that you can comfortably come in and see this edge. I want you to, initially, I want you to work this half. Okay. Okay, so, and judging from what we were talking about, I want you to come in this way, mm -hmm. then move and do that that procedure and see if that works for you or not. So if you want to do it from the side or from there. Probably from this way because I can see this better. That's what I do too. You have better control of both right. arms. You can go straight back and control that. Okay. Can you see any scratching? Yeah. It's... Is it? Tell me where you like the light. Right there is probably fine. Uh, I think and again, I'm mainly, mainly concerned that you can see this edge. Right. Okay. Okay. There we go, clean. Took two seconds. Gotta make sure my hands are clean now. Tilt a little bit now. When I say stop, just stop where you're at. Okay. Stop. Now, a couple things. One, we're watching this area because it's dangerous, mm -hmm. but this is equally dangerous. Sure. And look how close you came to that area. Mm -hmm. I can so, see actually right here so be aware of that. Second thing, to, to mitigate that problem and to get a better bite on this edge. So in other words, if you stay totally flat, you got equal pressure everywhere. You see this part of the pad? Mm -hmm. It's not supported. Right. So it's not really doing much out here. Mm -hmm. But yet it's affecting where you're stopping because that's where you, you see where you're stopping. So. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Run the machine. Yeah. And then let's add a little bit of tilt. You see that? Yep. Now I can still move as much as I want to, but I'm I'm focusing the polishing energy forward. Forward. Bit. Okay. So look mm -hmm. there versus there. Right. 
and then of course if we got extreme and said hey like that mm -hmm. let's see well i would tell you hey that's okay but you need to lift a little bit mm -hmm. or you're really forcing that as right. this thing swings around it's really digging a lot of paint so so and, and i'm not even opposed to saying hey if you do want to use that much tilt that's fine start here bring it in gently you follow you can you can do this at, at low speed that's totally fine bring it down come in anyway so just what i want you to do this time is think of this one watch this watch one, this one think of that one okay and i'm yeah go ahead and i'll, I'll keep you a bumper stop so you'll <laughs> feel it a little more arm speed straight up straight back now I'll move straight up back move now I want you to come ahead go ahead and come back this way over here just come all the way over okay. and I want to add tilt like that okay. now my see that my hands underneath it so if you feel it on the back go ahead up back down move over up straight lines up like this boom boom like a machine okay. boom boom you got that yeah now i think is this comfortable or not no it feels good now okay you have good control left and right yeah it's not wiggling no, too much it feels fine. okay yeah so what will we do if we have gripping and grabbing and steering what's the natural if everything is perfect you like your angle you can see that you're where everything's comfortable but we have pad grip what do we do we talked about it about an hour ago if if the pads grabbing and gripping and steering speed it, up. Okay. speed it up yeah people associate speed with increasing polishing of, or or, or um, force or uh -huh. partly true if you just as you increase speed you bear down more too but speed can cause that pad to glide along and 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 therefore not grip as well okay okay so try that okay so right now maybe i'll go over here okay You want more or are you good? That's pretty good. Let's try it just so you can feel it. Too much speed for you? Maybe a little bit, yeah. A little bit faster, I think it's better. But you can tell the difference. That's good, yeah. Ooh. Yep, that's my hand. <laughs> okay, stop. Now, just to try it, come over here and try to polish um, from this angle. And tell me which, what do you think? Yeah, I want you to still work this area. Okay. But I want you to tell me immediately, do you have more comfort going from here this way? Or did you like it better this way? In other words, you're aware like, I don't want to ruin that edge. Mm -hmm. I have better control going this way or I have better control going that way. So you tell me which one okay. feels like you can keep total control. So I'm essentially going to be going this direction. Yeah, instead of coming up to the edge. Right, just going along it. See if you can control it better that way okay. or, or the way we did it. All right, let's see. All right. Now, as you keep going up, you start losing control, don't right. you? Yep. Okay, go back. Yeah, did you notice that? And you yeah. were tilting up too. Right. And look. Look where you're at. Mm -hmm. You're here. Yep, I shifted. Yeah, a lot. you're not even near that area. So, so it's so, way easier to go the other direction yeah, for me. Yeah, total control. You come yeah. up, see exactly where you're at. You can even bump. I mm -hmm. do that a lot. I'll do this, uh, this bump and bump and back up. Um, call it scalloping. I'll come in there and go. Bzz, 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 mm -hmm. So I'm not locking on that for a long period of time sure. boom 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 i don't care if i'm polishing this much doesn't bother me a bit mm -hmm. i'm trying to take off the least amount of paint and get the best job done i don't care that i'm only doing this much if i'm tilting i just care about how much paint i'm getting off and how efficient am i i can come over here later and come this way yeah right and then if i want to then i can do the middle whatever yeah no, I, I don't feel comfortable working it this yeah. way yeah and that's the thing is a lot of people are taught or think that i have to go front to back yeah on the car, on the hood, I, even on the roofs, I don't polish front to back. Mm -hmm. I start over here, and yours is, I'll start out here, 
and I can I want to see when I come here mm -hmm. and stop and go back usually you're getting a much better fit this way okay versus yeah. this hoping right. not not knowing hoping I mean because really you you're either got to bring it in and now you don't have the control if this thing hits something it pushes you back so we'll talk about that with the rotary but okay. basically when I'm working on these I support myself on things that don't dent sure. and then I lock an arm and I can move I, I have a really good control if I can lock an arm but we'll talk about that with rotary so okay, okay. so I think uh, at this point let's see what Larry's doing you get all done Larry I'm, I'm done you finished you your up <laughs> okay okay what I'm, what, yeah right no really well, I, I, I was gonna have to say something oh say something then. come over here <laughs> I heard the word lunch. Jeez Louise. <laughs> All right, so when I just blew out the pad a minute ago, the pad was yellow just by doing this spot here. Can you uh, ninja by without getting caught there? In that Me? Thing, Kevin? Yeah. So the thing I wanted off. to show, where's my pen? Um, is the, look at you. <laughs> Sully, I got the face. Can you go in for the tight? He's just getting around the thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Ryan can pick that up. Oh, but looking good, huh? Well, see, we took out the majority of the, the swirls, these. I didn't clean this mm -hmm. up yet. Oh, these. yeah. We took out the majority of the swirls, but there's the deeper ones. So the, the question is, do I just go at it longer with the, the uh, finishing pad? Right. Do I switch to a, uh, you know, a little three inch or something and go after these little random deeper ones? Then the second question is, how would you attack these see how this right. door is kind of curved yeah. if you look it's kind of interesting it goes clean 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 uh, tell me if you can see this you guys uh, but right in this little strip you know you always get that strip where you just we didn't get it sure so like i'm thinking a scallop here but how would you right that's how i would do it because when you switch to smaller diameter pads they are easier to fit in areas but they load mm -hmm. up more quickly right and you start to haze things right you have to clean more often all the time right so when i went to go clean it off i was going to show you real quick but you guys are doing your thing yeah this was Oops. bright bright oh. yellow Oh, it was. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no reason to switch to a smaller pad. So light me up. And the, that's, you got to probably prime that up a little bit. Okay. Do you have the bigger, can you give me the bigger um, scan grip thing? Yeah. Like the handheld one, unless you have it in your pocket. That's right here. So I'm okay. going to be working. I'm going to scallop. Like you said, I'm going to move in and move out, like backing into a space and then back and back out and going to the next one. Right. Like, oh, I want to pull into this one. Oh, I don't, there's a tree there. So, I want to back out and move over. So this section here looks good, but as right. I was. Yeah, I can the really padding, see it now. Wow. Yeah. As, can you get that, Ryan, or no? Well, let's see what we got. Here is clean, uh -huh. meaning it looks good. There's some isolated scratches and the idea is, hey, do I stay with the foam pad? Uh, the uh, finishing pad or go to the compounding. Then the other question was, hey, when people do this, because every door nowadays has these, you know, beautiful right. designs. So we're going to try to knock both of those out. We have more scratches here and a funny shape. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to increase the quantity of liquid, but in this case, I'm putting most of it out here because I'm going to work that part of the pad. What? So And the reason it's not, explain why I can't hit this. Like, can you show see it without, the side? Just to like, give I'll, I'll put the light in. I can see the crevice. You oh, can yeah. imagine. See the light This is the extreme. Yeah, how let, me, will I, let me get in tight there. Yeah. Okay, I can see that there's that crevice there. Now, how am I going to form that? Yeah. I'd have to really push down hard, and now I have tremendous pressure here, almost nothing here. Right. So we would have extreme removal of paint here, and this would be dancing around and bouncing and scouring, doing no, no work, just making right. more mess. So what I just taught Meredith is what we're going to do here. We're going to use part of the pad. I'm on speed two. I've got extra polish on there. Yep. And I'm going to come up this way and down. You see that? Can you pick that up, Ryan? That most of this is not touching. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit for more slip. I get more control that way. Right from the top, Larry. I can see that edge. There you go. Keep catching that line, that pad. I'm, I'm aware of that edge. It's just clear bra here. Right, and I'm gonna come back. I'm really curving with that panel. I can feel it. Now talk about the rotation. It's not that big a deal with large stroke that it stalls. Because that side to side action is still yeah, getting there's so much there. I'm going to stop. But that's basically what, three back and forth passes? Oh, uh, here. I just have it on this one close. Okay. Oh, no, that towel's kind of. There we go. I see a little bit there, but. Yeah, you definitely got this portion mm -hmm. of it. So I would be aware of this area. Would I mask? Could I open the door? That's going to go in. So not in this car. Sometimes you can do that 
and access that panel. Mm -hmm. um, might be better to get a small machine for that area. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the wise move because if I tape this, then I'm writing on the tape or I'm on the protection film and that's transferring onto the paint. Now I see some haziness, which I expected because I'd used, a I used that, that polish for a long time and I still see a gouge here. So what we're gonna do, because you know, you have to be reasonable. You can't have five machines with five different pads. That's true. But I would like to blow this out. Yeah, I'll go blow it out real fast. Okay. Hold that thing. How are you going to do that? I'm just Unplug? Take, no, I'll take it off. Just do it real fast. Or you oh, okay, put it? on another machine. Yeah. Get on a machine that'll let it rotate. There's one up here. And there's a... Wait a minute. Where was it? Oh, that's yeah. like rotate. That definitely cut the defects, but it did leave it hazy. No, Which, Kevin, I have a question. You think we'd have sure. more machines um, here. This section you were talking about, like, what if you didn't have a small machine? Could you do this by hand? You could. Okay. That's smart. Yeah. yeah, and the same things rotate. apply. You take the Need microfiber app. Matter of fact, Grab the microfiber applicator. Okay. Just randomly slap it on, doesn't matter at this point. Do you see that stuff coming out? So basically that's all the sawdust that just came out. You know what I mean? When we were explaining before, that's all the sawdust. When we were doing like a red car, I know this is red, but a red single stage Ferrari that he and I did years ago, F40, we were blowing it. I'll try to find that footage. We were blowing it in slow motion. You could see red junk all over the place. Again, this one's got clear coat on it, so it's not, we're blowing clear stuff out, but if it was single stage, we'd be blowing red, green, blue, whatever the color of the car was. No, we don't need that way. You're up this way, you're getting to those valleys. So when you do hand application, you mimic what a machine might do for you. When you, pre when you have yeah. tilt and random orbit action. Okay, now, right now we right. flip. And grab that water okay. bottle. Okay, so, oh, it looks a little scoury. A lot of paint. And keep in mind, we're using microfiber. We can go to foam, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start flipping, flipping, flipping. Flipping pad. <laughs> Okay, towel. Can we get you a cleaner one? You can most certainly get to where you need to. Can you see open? Yeah. Here's Let me a, see here. Switch that one. Yeah. That one's getting gross. Yeah, it is. Much better. Yeah. Not perfect, but much better. Could, I would stick with this yeah. polish and use more and flip my pad. Maybe have a couple applicators or you know something like You're that. You're saying use that pad instead of. She asked if Meredith asked if is it reasonable to use hand application? If you don't have the small machine right. and you're worried about getting in there with the machine you have, can you satisfactorily get the work done? And you can. But at the same time, if it was deeper scratches, it would be wise to go to a compound first, then follow, follow up. But look how much better that is. Mm -hmm. So that's totally reasonable, especially in areas like this. Right. Professionals are always trying to use machines in there. and Sometimes just hand application is the easiest, best way mm -hmm. to go. I see a lar larger scratch. I can get sure to that. You're going to stick with I didn't put that on right, so I just okay. threw it on there. You need uh, polish? No, I think I'm going to just, uh, oh, uh, no, I'm, I want to see if I can get it haze free and then you can work on that yourself. So let's get you right there. Okay. Right there. We wouldn't normally try to finish out with microfiber because it's so good at grabbing and holding on to debris that it immediately starts to load up and cause a scouring issue. But this has a lot of microfiber strings, so we're hoping some of that gets moved around and, and hidden away. It's much, much better. And again, just as we talked about, Meredith, I would finish my door, I would let it sit for an hour or two, come back and check it again, and if it needed to, I'd follow up with foam. I see a couple of deeper yeah. scratches, I would leave them, leave as much paint as you can on this car. It's in right. such great shape, you're gonna keep it. So you're talking about expansion, contraction kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, I'm thinking that, you know, it's always a good idea to finish out your panel as best you can get it, and then come back to it. Come back in a couple hours, few hours, hour, whatever it is, let it do its shifting and adjusting and cooling down and, and moving, and then you might say, oh, wow, it is a little hazy. Right. I stopped with microfiber. It looked good. But now that I let it rest, I'm going to finish up with foam. Okay. So, Ryan, we're close to lunch is what you're telling me? Yeah, we need All to right. do a break for... All right. So what we're going to do is when we come back, uh, we're going to use that test panel that's behind there. 
and we're going to talk about expansion and contraction, the stuff that we did on your car, mm -hmm. and we kind of had that aha eureka moment. Like, so I think what? after lunch we come back, we explain that because I, I mean to get that on camera is, is pretty yeah. is pretty ridiculous. You know that expansion stuff. Sure. So we good lunch. Yep. Sounds All good right, to me. We'll be back in two seconds. Now, as you mentioned on the other side of Meredith's car, we were talking about expansion and contraction and how important that is to the paint. And I, I, you talked about letting it sit for a few minutes. Right. We just finished up the panel, and I said, you know, normally what I'll do is get it as where I think it's ready, it's done. Right. And I'll come back and revisit it in an hour or two just to see if any expansion of, of the panel and the paint from the heat and the twisting and the pressure right. has come back to rest. All right, so my goal here was to sort of prove that and not do it necessarily on Meredith's car. Yeah. Um, so we have a scrap mm -hmm. panel here. We went across the street, talked to a body shop guy. And he said, hey, can we, you know, do we have any scrap metal or whatever? And he said, yeah, absolutely, I'm back. Sure. We looked, we got it. And it's always a good idea to do that. Um, and you can do some tests and burn through and have a good time. I, mm -hmm. I've had my test panel for like three, four years and I burned through it and play with it. Anyways, um, <laughs> let's, let, we're gonna measure the paint first, right? Then we're going to heat it up with a heat gun. Right. Well, what we're attempting to show is the the panel, the primer, the base coat, and the clear coat are going to expand with the heat. Okay. Right. Now, expand indicates immediately like, oh, get bigger. But in this case, and in most cases, from what we found recently, right. is that as we get expansion, it goes in all directions. So it can stretch and give you a, a reading of thinness. But at the same time, you can also get a reading where uh, you've got some absorption of solvents or, you know, with the expansion and contraction, it didn't come back to rest exactly or right away. It take, it, it's not a, it's not an open and closed this much and that much every time. It's constantly shifting. It's dynamic. It's right. one of the reasons why we want to show that these are a great tool to have, but you shouldn't solely rely on the readings. Makes sense. All right, so here we go. Let's put this down. Get and your, we're going to use a heat gun right okay. so that we don't remove paint during a polishing. Right. Because normally we're polishing and we're heating up the paint, but we're also abrading paint away. So that's very to fair. take that, that out of the equation. So let's say oh. right there. You ready? You do it? Okay. Yeah, just put, I'm fired yeah. up. You, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit so I can well, get it in the same spot. Mm. Not good? That is perfect. Okay. All right, so 5.2. We're all good there. Let me just do this real quick. Yes? 5.3. 5.2. That's how sensitive it is. So let's call it 5.2, because I was off a little bit before. 5.4, of course. <laughs> and we, we have done this before, and, and the ink has actually falsified the reading. Oh, yeah. You're adding material at 5.3. Yeah. 5.3, mm -hmm. yeah. 5.2, we're right in the area. And All right. You got your temperature? Yeah, the temperature right now. Is, let me just put my finger there, because I can't see it. There it is. Take my finger away. It's about 72 degrees. You see that? Yep, got it. <clears throat> what do you want me to bring this up to, Larry? Just about 150, 160. Okay. Would you, you say what in the sun? Roughly 140, oh, 150. Like a black car in the sun. Certainly. So. And that does the entire panel, so it might act differently, but we think that this is a good indicator to show that it's actually occurring. Where are we at? One. 125. Uh, 140. Seems sensible that if you heat the entire panel, you might get more expansion, right? Because this right. is fighting to push that out. Or it might cause it to not expand that much that way, but more this way. Right. 150. Go to 150, 160? 160. Okay. I'll keep telling you, you're almost here. Maybe two more passes. There you go. Now you're up to 170. All right. So, well, yeah. 161. Ready? Okay. Let's see here without burning myself. <laughs> yes, no, it's reading. On? No. Oh, it's hot. 5.2. 5 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. 5.1. I go down just a little bit. Yeah, so it went down 0.2. Again, we're in, we're in um, the middle. Other things to consider, cars. that you brought up a good point, is that we have the same quantity of paint and material, right? but we either make it less dense or more dense. So if we froze this, it would contract and become dense. Right. If we do the opposite, like we just did, and we heat it, 
it becomes less dense or more malleable. And we found that even by pressing on the hotter paint that we were getting indentation marks, mm -hmm. which indicates yeah, that this was there. actually able to go in deeper right. and give you a false reading again. Right, the way I was saying it was like a mattress. So if your mattress was like this at normal uh, rest, normal temperature, right? And then you had all kinds of feathers or whatever it is down in there. Then you heated it up hypothetically and increased the top of the of the mattress sure. and the bottom, but you didn't change the amount of uh, Filling, feather, fillings, right. feathers in there. Yeah. So when when this thing was getting bigger and bigger and there's you know more room in here, as you would jump onto the bed, let's say you'd go. Yeah, you it becomes fluffier and right. essentially twistier, more malleable, softer right. feeling. And we sort of proved that by having this little tip right there. You see that thing? Yeah, that tip right there, you know, it's, it's relatively hard because it's got to, you know, yeah. measure the paint. So sure. as it was doing it, it was denting the paint and, and, and pushing it, it in. It left so. the mark. It, it def left the mark. Right. So, so we're still at 5.1. Let's see if it actually goes up over. I can feel the heat in my hands right now. It's so hot sometimes it doesn't uh, measure. There you go. 5.2. It's starting to come back up. 5.2. 5.2, 5.2. So obviously it, as it heated, you know, it, it expanded gonna, and as yeah. it's cooling, it's starting to yep. come back up again. It's gonna do that. So and that was gonna, kind of what we were and trying to do. And it might prove. even take, if you're doing entire panels, it could take. It's still 98 degrees. That's oh yeah, okay. So yeah. that's why it's just slowly starting to come back up. And when you're up. polishing, now you're adding twisting force and you're right. adding liquid that's in the buffing liquid. So you're going right? like this to it. You are pressing in a liquid under force, twisting, pushing, moving. This is a structure that can absorb. So you would be possibly instilling a liquid into there and mm -hmm. that has to evaporate, it has to be moved out. So that so slows the process. So you could get a false reading. You could think it looks perfect today. It looks pretty good tomorrow, but next week you might start to see some hazing and that was just because it, it finally came back to rest. So. And does that work the same as if like you pulled your, you finished your car and then you pulled it out into the sun? You right. Know, let it sit in the parking lot or whatever and then yeah. pulled it back inside? We, we actually do that and a lot of guys do that when they're doing coatings because it's so critical right. to get the paint perfected with certain coatings. They don't hide anything. The last thing you want to do is, you know, spend all this time and energy installing a super durable coating and then come to find out a week later, oh my goodness, look at all the yeah. micro marring yeah, I've got. Yeah, that's super common underneath. with those so things. So we, we recommend that you cycle it. Cool it, let it go to room temperature, take it outside. Okay. A lot of guys use the infrared lights and bring it up to different varying temperature, let it expand, contract, expand, contract. When you're confident you're not seeing anything return, now do the coating. Got it. All right, so you guys are going to head back and do mm -hmm. scalloping on the rear? Yep, we're going to do some Continue more. on the other side and keep this projects. thing going. Projects. Okay. You guys gonna follow them? All right. Great. Yep. Get this out of the way. Mm -hmm. go up here. Over here. We want to move this thing out of the way. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Mind grabbing okay, outside. There. Is it like hooked on or? No, no, we just pick it up. Good enough. That's fine. Okie dokie pokey. Okay, now we could certainly pull out a small pad machine like this one. Uh huh. And work this area which would be the obvious thing you'd want to do. Right. But let's say you didn't have this. Right. And I, want, I want to teach you how to, you know, maximize okay. using, using one, one pad, one liquid, one machine. So let's get the machine and have you work you that. Gonna... I'm going to okay. blow this out yes. really quick. Say, Just double check that the, it's wiped down completely. Okay. Oh, I didn't see <clears throat> where we stopped. Same, same polish everything. Okay. Light prime. I tend to do it on the outer ring when we're not using much. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so kind of the same ideas. We're gonna watch our dangerous areas. Can we get some of that light? Yeah, we'll get yeah. find out where he put one of those. Yeah. 
I don't know where the little handheld went. Oh, the handheld, yeah. We need the handheld. Hmm. Let's get the handheld. That's the, that's the one I really need. There we go. Kind of. That's fine. Yeah, you got it? Finally, okay, yep. great. The same kind of idea. You can choose to go this way. Bad idea. Yeah. We're already right. on this edge, on that edge, divot there, really bad. We have no choice to either get a smaller pad or start to utilize this one the way we did there. Okay. So in this case, um, you can either look here uh -huh. and remember that this has to be up and start. you can start the machine and come this way. You see that? Yeah. That's pretty safe. That feels comfortable. I'm using a lower speed because I want to be very careful. Okay. But I'm picking up my arm to speed it. You know, I can either bump speed up of the machine and get more uh, slipperiness of the pad, or I can just move my arms faster, right? Mm -hmm. So do that, and then we come this way, being aware like, wow, this is really high. Right. So you might even want to come down, uh, you might want to come at this, this way, see? And you can see this side here, so. Mm -hmm. And just not even moving the machine, just barely move, just turning it more than anything. See that? Mm -hmm. and we can check the pattern, watch it stop. That's where it stopped, right there. You see? Yeah. So this is a difficult one, okay. but you're you're up. <laughs> okay. I want you to try to take your time All right. and just be aware of the danger areas. Okay. And it's a, it's a, even for me, it's a little awkward. Do you think it would be too weird to go at it this no, way? No, I don't think it'd be weird at all. And I'm gonna keep my hand here so I can tell you if you're hitting my thumb and say, hey, your, your angle's not good. Okay. Go ahead. There you go. You're totally safe on the back end. Oops, sorry. Slow down a little bit. Stop. Stay right where you're at. Now, it's okay for that to momentarily come across that, but it is coming across. So, Too much. Okay. And I would bump my speed a little bit and ho hold the machine. Hold and come down and just okay. don't rest it on the pad. Okay. You are holding it here and here and you are adjusting your hands. Okay. You, so we're going to exactly. be doing that. Exactly. Much better. Okay. More tilt. There you go. More tilt. Lift the back end up more. Keep it going. No, no, let me do it. You just hold it. You see that? Yep. You see that? If it doesn't, if it doesn't rotate, what you do is it's stalling. You go up, new spot. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. There we go. Now I can see it. Up, stop. You're way off kilter. You had it just on yeah. this side. Difficult. Yeah, that's cool. not easy. It's definitely not easy. Uh, let's try the back side now. Go to the side okay. and let's try and see if that helps you to, yeah, maybe you're going to, maybe that will be easier for you. I'm going to keep my finger here. You see, you've got to have a lot of tilt. Right. You got to go more than that just to be safe. Okay, you go ahead. All right, let's see if this will work. That's good. Slow down. Take it easy. Not as easy. Uh, maybe because it's getting further away from me. Again. Okay. It's well, here, how about this? Let's see. You you can take it like this. Right. Sideways. You can do this way. Yeah, let's try that. We don't have to do this or this. We can go this way. So again, this is what you're gonna do. You're not gonna rest the pad and let it direct you. You're gonna do all the work yourself. You're gonna twist and hold, see? Mm -hmm. And if you wanna start it, mm -hmm. I'm limiting the rotation there. Obviously high speed, no no. Low speed, not a problem. If it starts rotating too much, just drag your hand right there, your finger. There you go. You see that? Yeah. I'm completely holding the machine. See that? I can go nice and slow. I can move. Um, this is an option too, but you really gotta watch. Yeah, this is. is really dangerous. So 
do a, a couple more okay. passes and then we're going to move on to something else. But that's something you should practice on yeah. a, a front fender. You know how sh shaped they are these days? They're so mm -hmm. contoured. It'd be a good one to get it, one from the junkyard or the body shop. So I'm going to be doing this kind of motion, right? Yes, and okay. I'll keep this here so you're going to watch there. Slow down your arm speed a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Because we're moving so slow and so soft, it's going right. to take a lot of cut. Come back my way. Slow down, take it easy. You can add a little more pressure, drop it down a little bit. Yeah, bump your speed a little bit up and then drop a little pressure, drop the machine down a little bit. You can wiggle a little bit more. You can teeter-totter a little bit more to get more of that panel done or that that's this, this panel, this part. Stop. Difficult. Yeah. If you had to do that for a while, you'd say, man, the next Ooh. machine I'm getting something with three inch. Right. So now let's just let's just do that. Let's see how much easier that is. Probably be a lot easier. Yeah. That is uh, here. Let me get the finishing disc on. That's on. Make sure I'm not twisted up. Yeah, how, how important is cable management there? Very. Yeah. Pull the whole thing down and the, the lights over and everything. Not that it's happened to you ever. <laughs> happens to me. Small pad. Takes very little liquid. Hold that. Prime it up. Speed. Start there. In that okay. slow range. Okay. What range are you in? What speed? Well, I just started out on a, on a one to six. I'm just going to, I'm going to assume with the microfiber and all this cushioning, it's, it's not going to have a lot of rotation initially so um yeah there we go that's perfect yeah i can even go slower but i want to what i'm gonna adjust now is for, for pad drag so much better meredith i can scale up i can run in any direction i want to now yeah, you come over here and you yeah. try I know you've used the, the smaller uh, system before, so it's, we don't need a lot of okay. time on it. Uh, the switch is here. Oh yeah, it there kind of rocks. Okay. Figure that out. Getting it. Push on the back. There you go. All you got in that, and I, now you can either go back and forth, or you can scallop still. You can still do half and half. Slow down, you gotta slow it, slow down, there you go. Watch your back, you're already hitting that back. You still can tilt here. Okay. Okay? Relax, it's okay, we're gonna. Oh no, it's yeah. hitting me too much Give me some more tilt, this back is hitting the, the back. There you go, a little more tilt. Yeah, bring your back hand up, there you go. There you go, okay. Stop and lift, I wanna show you. Hard to see it. I think we're going to add a little polish just so we can see bit. what's what it's doing. Not so concerned about defect removal. This looks like this one's tinted or single stage. Um, what the paint? This. Oh, I don't know. This is a factory add-on, so who knows what. Mm. Well, knows just what an do. indicator right there. Yeah. I don't know what they do. They yeah. Do something okay. different for their bolt-ons. So look, what you had last time was. Slow down, think. You're looking at this edge mm -hmm. and you're thinking of this edge. Okay. And so I think in, your, in this last case, you were not enough tilt. You need to come in here again, being aware of that this is gonna hit. So it's okay to have tilt. You just control the pressure, right? We're, we're holding it. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much speed. Start out, start out at one. Okay. And love that switch. Let's just do that for the time being. See there? Mm -hmm. Look at that back. See yeah, there? Completely off. Completely off. I can continue to do that just fine. And how do you know? Check the pattern. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Move it away. Look. Mm -hmm. Completely avoiding it. Now this one. Obviously, it's going to take a long time to get the work done right. here, but it just takes a moment 
to damage it. So it's, it's okay. You can now, once you know it, the way you're gonna approach this panel, now you can bump up and start getting some work done, right? I use my fingers a lot. You see my fingers? Yeah. I'm making sure that I'm not gonna hit paint. Is that a good idea? I don't know, I still have my fingers. Yeah. Do better with gloves, but I've done that for years. It helps slow the rotation, doesn't hurt, and I know that I'm not touching. Yes, you could also apply a piece of tape, tape right? but if we're trying to final polish, which we are, yeah, you if you hit that. that tape, this abrasive takes off some of the t uppermost portion of the tape, transfers in right. the pad, and now you're scouring right. it. And this is pretty soft. I think this is a different paint than yeah, this. Yeah, it should be, yeah. So let's wipe that, clean that up, and let's move on to something else. Okay. That's the stuff you'll have to practice. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, look at that. It's hard to wipe, isn't it? It is hard to wipe. That's an indicator that we're cutting a lot of paint. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, interesting, is that when you get difficult wipe off, because I get those calls a lot, like this, this, I've been doing this buffing and this paint, man, it's just so hard to wipe off. It, do, it doesn't usually happen. Well, it's coming off rapidly. Right. Let, let's do this. Um, a little water. Grab, no, just grab the same polish you're using, apply a little bit to that towel, and yeah, just, or an applicator, and just rub it on there and it'll take it right off. Cool. Yeah. What happens is interesting in, in that we're using all kinds of hard particles. There's a lot of there's liquid ingredients and there's solid ingredients yeah. in a bu typical buffing liquid, right? Some of them are in there to actually cut paint. Some are in there to control to make sure that the, the emulsion stays together. Mm -hmm. um, some is made to have absorbency. All kinds of things. Anyway, a lot of hard particle in there. Right. You start to polish, and you're cutting away paint, and now you've got more hard particle and eventually your pad instead of being soft and fluffy is now loaded with hard particulate right. to the point you now have a hard barrier mm -hmm. you have this layered and tiny hard pieces of material they're not any they're just tiny they're still just as hard now assume this is fully loaded with hard material in in the meantime we just were doing a test showing how you get expansion and malleability mm -hmm. this is warming up and becoming softer and softer and softer you have now a hard surface a soft, soft surface, surface and you have remnants of paint and abrasive rolling around under force what's going to happen it's gonna get scratched up. it can't even get in here it's fully loaded yeah. it's going to go down in there and stick mm -hmm. you're, you're knocking it in there you're, it's like you're taking rocks and mud and just going Ugh, uh. right, grinding it in. interesting right. huh so when someone gets a, a liquid that they're used to and it normally is easy to wipe off but on a certain paint system it's difficult it's a good indicator that you're cutting a lot of paint away or it's unusually dry. So increase your liquid mm -hmm. or use that quantity of liquid for less time in a smaller area. Change one of those parameters to solve that problem. All yeah, right. good. Okay, at this point, we've compounded and polished uh, most, if not all of this side wrapped around here. Then we got to the tail light, which I think is an interesting place to stop and have a bit of a conversation. So the tail light is made of plastic, of course. We're mm -hmm. gonna talk about that. And there's a little bit of a ridge or a ledge or whatever you want to call it. So a random orbital with a large stroke may not be ideal here. It's not. It does that karate chopping action right. as it orbits around. It, it can hit that, that fender. And it's also not efficient at polishing that edge as, as it's swinging around. It's only polishing that very outer right. edge some of the time. Now, we talked about that in an earlier episode mm -hmm. where, you know, it's not as efficient at that outer edge. And, uh, you know, we talked about cutting the pads, all that kind of stuff, but it's coming into play right now. Yeah, so we're going to transition to the best machine for that, for strategic polishing, the rotary. And uh, I'm going to tape this uh, portion of the paint. As we mentioned before, I'd like to tape immediately before I polish and then remove it immediately Wait after. a second, then what did you do as well? Oh, you, you're I, doing things so fast the camera's well, not catching Well, it's just an old trick that the, the body shop guys have done for years is just take some of the tack away because if you have any lint, this one probably doesn't. It's just a habit. Right. It won't stick as much and come off easier because I don't need it to, to last a long time. I just need it to protect in case I hit the pad against it. On that note over there, there was a, a guy, I can't remember your name, but you emailed me and you kept saying that every time I pull the tape off, I'm ripping the paint off of a, a front spoiler or something like that. There's a trick. There you go. There's the Kevin Brown patented trick. <laughs> it's right there. it's Maybe just something that's been done a lot, long time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show Meredith a, a very brief process, and then she's going to replicate it. 
And so obviously we need very little polish for a very little pad. And talk about if you were to hit this tape, or you hit the glass, or you hit the plastic, or you hit the right. rubber, what is that going to do to that? Well, if, since we're working on plastic, you want to keep in mind different material than the paint. And there is plastic being removed as we polish, just like paint. Mm -hmm. So we have plastic residue. So keep that in mind if you happen to be doing an entire polishing session that you're polishing paint, and then you migrate from there and go, oh, I think I'll just knock out that, that plastic lens. Mm -hmm. When you come back to the paint, you could very likely have, or you will have plastic residue in your compound stuck to your pad. So it's best to say, well, I'm going to just use a dedicated pad for plastics. Yeah, yeah stick to paint, right. paint, stick to plastic, mm -hmm. plastic. And if you do happen to hit tape or rubber, you kind of have to blow it out. Not start over again, but you're going to have contaminants in it. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. the tape too. Every other material, rubber, is, and rubber is the big one. Yeah. It, it, tape rubber to protect the rubber from getting burned, of course, but that transfers all kinds of ingredients onto the edge of your pad. And it's, right. it's definitely contamination that's hard to remove by just blowing out. Right, so show us how you're gonna prime that. Okay, so we're, this one's very easy. I'm just gonna use the tiniest of droplet and let it spread itself for the most part. And that hasn't been primed, right? No. That's a brand new pad. Brand new pad. So take, show that to the camera real fast, this side, uh, to uh, Ryan. Yep. And and a sec. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there's barely anything there. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna let it set it down. We're on a low speed, and again, Meredith, we're going to do what we talked about before. We're going to find a speed that lets the pad glide along smoothly. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use that speed unless we know why we're going up or down. In other words, we want a reason. Why would I add speed or take it away? And we'll talk about that because we're going to go from this small pad system to a larger pad on the quarter panel. Okay. Right. And watch his finger. Put now your watch hand on this. There. Watch where he this puts is his what, finger. This is some of the things that makes the job easier. See his finger there? I, I am going to use my finger as a guide. And I'm, so I've got good control up and down, in and out, left and right. You see that? And now I can start here if I wanted to and come in and I can move in like we talked about. I can tilt, I can do all those things. I can just drag. Let's see. There we go. So you have a little tilt going right now? Yeah. Same idea as a fly. I want to be aware that I'm, mm -hmm. I got an edge here and I've got an edge here. You're going to have a better shot over my shoulder, right? Put another drop right there. I think what we're going to do in this case is just put a tiny drop. There, that's good. And we're just going to apply it. I don't do this on paint too much because I don't like it sitting there right and swelling the paint. But in this case, Get not a big deal. Angle. I'll move out of the way. You can get closer. Okay, and that's a lot. So I'm going to, and that's going to let my fingers slide too. Here we go. So, let's see, here we go. Right now you can't see it, but on my knuckle my, on my pinky is sliding across this part. So I've always got something to help stabilize that pad. Better angle for me would be here. I can really see that, it's but I can't get the stability I want. So yeah. I'm gonna go back. Get like this level, right there. there you go. You see where my end of the machine is? Where's the back of the machine, Meredith? Completely off of the tail light. No, no, the back of the oh. actual machine. Right up against your chest. Yep, I'm using the body to help stabilize it so it doesn't bounce around. Mm -hmm. It's a trick and you'll see that a lot with old school professional detailers where they're leaning on things and they're securing themselves and they're, they're trying to make it so that this torquey motion isn't steering them around mm -hmm. and it really does help even in this small area. So um, something like that. See that? It's just a natural, it's just a natural to touch something and figure out where to stabilize. See how that is? Mm -hmm. And this is actually a great way if somebody wants to learn the rotary you start out with very small pads and low speeds, and you learn. Well, look at that. See, I didn't. I wanted to show you, but when you get used to this, you start. You start to think of the edges, and you start to think, well, if I come in at this edge and grab it, it bites. Mm -hmm. Right? It's steering me. So I'm here. I'm tilting. You see that? I'm. I'm rolling off the edge. Always rolling off the edge. I try to say, here's the center line of the tool. That point is the center. I want to set. I want to line that up. If I have to roll off of an edge, I want to lay that down on the center line and tilt. You see that? And you can look at this. Put another droplet there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. What you can look for as you teach yourself to rotary polish. Use an abundance of liquid and look for the pattern. Can you get a close up of that and see the the, the lines of where the buffing pad slid and it's coming out of that? Like that. What if I was 
incorrectly polished. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. See that? Coming, I'm hitting everywhere. I'm hitting on and off there. No control. Here, you see the way it's, you know, start over there. If I'm wrong, you can see the way it's coming up and curving. I wanna come off. I wanna slide off so it's not knocking, biting. You did that in one of the earlier videos. You right. should. So, start up here, center line, center, tilt, and you can see the line. Give me another dab, Meredith, please. I wanna see the whitish emulsion so it'll, it'll show the pattern. Start, tilt, oh, a little more. See, curve, straight off, straight off, not biting. Okay, so you keep that in mind and you go a little faster, you, you learn to transition. Just as you go, you're, you're tilting or you're moving the machine. It's not so hard, it just takes a little bit of practice. So for that, that reason, use a small pad, mm -hmm. use a, uh, a polish designer, move paint slowly, mm -hmm. and you won't get in any trouble. And then when you get down to these areas here, again, even if it is a tiny pad with, with a, a product that removes paint or plastic slowly, you still wanna be at the level of the pad I want to be able to see right here so if I want to and this is so controlled because it's small I can tilt and go back and forth like we were talking about it's not always easy to do or safe to do or I can do what we showed you before up and down and move right over now right now you wouldn't think so we've got a tremendous amount of plastic residue yeah so I'm gonna knock off the oxidized plastic really quick and blow this pad out and then let you try okay so you're doing like a little miniature shock and awe here, so to speak? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm cutting off the oxidation and little water spots. Right, because one, one of the, one of the downsides of having a, the smaller pad is that it just fills up. Immediately up. loading, mm -hmm. yeah. You don't think about it, but it's in seconds. Yeah, if, if you look on the top here, the top yeah. already looks better because he was oh, actually yeah. doing that. And if you look at the side, yeah. you see it's still got swirls in it because yeah. he just, he kind of just, Right. Try to take off so all the we're going to use an excess of polish for you just so it feels, okay. so it glides along. And we're not going to worry about defects right now. They're coming out really easy anyway. So, prime with your glove, <laughs> your gloved hand. And then let's just, give me another dab. And just, let's just smear it so that we have some lubricity on the surface. So wherever you decide you want to polish, that's fine with me. I'm just going to help guide you along. Where do you want to start? I just do this. Okay, let's start there because okay. that's let's and see. we'll transition. Okay. And I might reach in there and grab okay. and if I tell you to stop exactly the way you are, just let off the trigger because you might be at an angle I want to show something okay. or something like that. Or I might grab in and help you too. Is it okay right. the way I'm just trying to get her some light. Right, right now the fingers are fine. You're already tilt up. you want to tilt. You're gonna start flat. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and fire it up. And minus it down if you want. Start out here. Now just touch it and move back. See your pattern? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, you're square, you're getting a full circle. Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. Now, do it again. Good, now watch when you tilt. You can see the pattern. If you tilt, move in. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. About a third of the pad, so all that polishing energy now focus. Now just go ahead and start going. I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and do what you think you wanna do. I'm just gonna watch for edges and stop. Look at your, look at the width. Mm -hmm. It's smaller than the diameter of the pad, so mm -hmm. that tells you only a portion's touching. Right. So if it's, the, if it's the center, that's an issue. I'd rather have you only have a portion of the outer edge. Okay. That way you have consistency, because if you use the center, can you get that shot? Tremendous amount of pressure right where it's touching, mm -hmm. and it progressively gets less as you go out there. And in bigger systems or heavier pads or higher speeds, this pad will start to flutter and bounce and scour and cause control issues. So. Better to say, well, yeah, I can only have so much touching, but if I do that, we're really putting a lot of energy there and heat. Mm -hmm. So better to just have a portion, bring it in and use that portion. And then, and then curve your hands to match that, you see? Mm -hmm. you, you, you mimic the shape by moving, yes, there you go. Back hand is adjusting, the front one just supporting. Getting a little chatter. Yeah, a little bit. It's loading up a little bit with the, the compound. And now tell me what happens when I go from one. Does it feel more comfortable or is it, what's happening? It actually feels pretty good right Okay, there. so what happened, this is another sen uh, dynamic with speed. As you drop speed, we talked about earlier, you increase pad drag. However, the pad becomes more soft and supple. 
more like it is at rest. So if it's a soft, pliable pad, at very low speed, it remains a soft, pliable pad. You bump speed up, mm -hmm. there's less time for it to make an adjustment. It's like hitting a speed bump at five miles an hour where you go over the speed bump and the tire sidewall has time to flex and bend versus 80 miles an hour, you hit it so fast, you blow the tires, bend the rims, and break the suspension. Okay, stop. Let's go ahead and let me blow that out and then we're gonna have you do up here. Okay. What do you think, Larry? I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. I've been watching Kevin do this for, I don't know, 10 years or something. Every time I watch him, it's still spectacular. Even though I've seen the show 50 times, it's great. <laughs> Off. Uh, and even though we were talking and we were actually getting work done, it actually <laughs> it looks a lot better already. <laughs> yeah, from here it's, it's, yeah, it's really really nice. Like new. Oh, compared to this one. Did you trade these out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now try to not think about it too much. Polish, Larry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Polish. <laughs> Hurry up. Don't think too much about getting work done. Just think about two things. One. Don't bite into that, pa mm -hmm. uh, that, that tape. And two, get your hand where you can somehow slide along and support this thing. I'm gonna make this slippery. So figure out where you can use, there you go. That's perfect. That's a, a good way to do that as well. Okay. Go ahead. That's fine. Is he a genius or am I losing my mind? Isn't this so fun to watch on no, camera? This is like my favorite scene I've ever done. Go over there and check him out. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, it feels good. Feels good that way. You don't have to worry so much about this outer edge right. that way. Now do it the way you did first. Go without scalping. Seems good, but you're having a more difficult time, aren't you? Yeah, Keeping that bit. line. Yep. And you're not thinking about this. The good thing, you do have a good tilt though. Now do it that way. The scalloping's a lot more comfortable. Way more comfortable. More controllable. You're going to get less problems that way. And you're just barely tapping the tape too. That's perfect. Because that part of the pad's not going to, for the most part, touch the lens. Okay, good. Very good. So go ahead and just take uh, take about a minute and just start polishing. I want we haven't even touched that area. So keep in mind the things we talked. Do you want me to? I'm gonna throw some yeah, tape there. Yeah, probably Are you bit. done up here? Um, I think it's. Because let's pull the tape if you are. Yeah. I would say yes. I want it out of there. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Safety purposes. I'm gonna come behind you here, and I'm gonna. Yeah. You want to use that one? Go ahead. Right. Have at it. Oops. Oopsie daisy. Oops. Do you think you, I'm gonna cover that one. I don't even wanna risk it. That little bump there would yeah. take about a microsecond and the paint would be gone. Totally. These panels don't fit perfectly either, so it probably is a little bit raised. That's from that subwoofers. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bending, up, bending your car up. <laughs> probably it is actually. Oh, Boy, it's hard to do this Tuck with, with uh, gloves, gloves on. on yeah, yeah. All you, Kevin. <laughs> yep. I wear silicone. It sticks to your fingers when you're wearing gloves. Put, there you go. Tuck that in there. There. Cool. Okay. Let me know if you need more polish. If it starts to, if it starts to chatter, bounce, and hop, it indicates that you're, you're loaded with plastic residue or your polish is completely dried up or, or the pad's loaded. Yeah, okay. pad's loaded or you're... Just say the word and I'll... <laughs> Is it gliding along fine? Yeah, feels good? Feels okay, right that, that's the right speed. Yep, there you go. Move your head to see right at the edge, right? As you get lower, you're going to have to sit down or... And then keep in mind... There you go. Stop. Okay, right there. What's going to happen you, you got to keep in mind so that's a good idea yeah it's hard to have your hand there uh -huh. but but protect back here but keep that in mind because it can it can hit right. on bigger machines you're going to hit, you're gonna hit yeah. or your your cord's going to drag if it's not cordless but i noticed that you started to move down and you tilted more as you came down mm -hmm. because you can't you can't see that mm -hmm. now where this was the critical areas now down is here's the critical so now you come down and you figure out, do I want to adjust my machine like this? It's not reasonable unless you have your hand protecting it, sure. right? Maybe I need to come at it. You can do that. And, you, and definitely, again, like we talked about, you can start here, out here, and bring it in. And you can reverse. This seems very odd, but look at what I'm yeah. supporting with my knuckles and right. my finger. 
it's it's completely in control to use the back side of that pad it's very rare that you do um, but you know obviously you can come over here and turn the machine like that right get it out of the way and now I can see everything and I can I've got support right here this is the best way see that mm -hmm. so you try that I'll put a little polish and again we should probably clean that but just for the sake of teaching there you go start out away are you are you able to see it okay yeah I think so you can go a little flatter the pad will, will flex a, a bit nope get your eyes down you you're not touch, you're not hitting here get your eyes down to here there you go Is that okay mm -hmm. can you rest a hand on this to give you support Let's see. Oh, stop. Let's see. How did I do that? Can you get? You need to get. I probably need to just. You're positioning where, where, like, where I. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then get your hand to support you. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then you've got great control. So move where I am. Yeah. I'm probably blocking you. I'll come around your way. Get totally comfortable. So that's the most important thing. Is that better? Yeah, it feels better, yeah. And get your hand against the panel. Start away from it if you want to. There you go. You keep going. I'm going to show you. Curve. Come up. Come over. Curve. See that? Mm -hmm. We're getting in good contact all the way down that way. Let's go back the other way. See that the top of the pad's not touching. That's okay. You've got to have that curve, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you go ahead. I'm gonna. You got it. Get your eyes down when you get to the bottom. Keep going. I'm gonna turn, turn. See that? Yeah. Okay. Next purchase, no more amplifiers. Get yourself a little lift, huh? <laughs> your tail lights. Okay, that's good. All right. Yeah. Okay, we're transitioning from the small rotary. Mm -hmm to a larger size. This is a five inch pad and we're going to use the time tested, the industry standard, been around for decades, wool. It's a newer wool pad okay. uh, and it's a, it's a soft, very, very fine oh, yeah. wool. So it'll be comfortable. I want to use the wool first, not to show you the rate of cut, just to show you how it feels. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to switch to foam and see how that feels. So our goal is to see how these two feel. And uh, I'm going to run this on the slowest speed and if it's grabbing and gripping and steering, then we'll change it up. But I don't, I'm not concerned about cutting. So I'm okay. just going to prime this again. Sorry that I don't have my glove on because I was taping. But <laughs> I'm actually putting tape on. It's difficult. But there's, I don't want to put too much polish on this because wool is not so great at grabbing and holding onto it like uh, microfiber. Uh -huh. So if I put too much, we'll be wearing it. Right. All okay? Place. okay. So we're on speed one, okay. which is a very low speed. And we're going to do and up and down like I showed you before, okay? So that's as fast as we're gonna go. It's okay to come out here okay. and then drop in. Come up, same exact principles apply to this machine as the random orbital. I can tell you right now that because we are tilting, it's concentrating the energy tremendously. It's gonna cut a lot quicker, yeah. yeah. Now. Plus is, cuts a lot quicker. Negative, cuts a lot quicker, right? Also, because we're not generally using the entirety of the, of the pad, why? Because as you do, it wants to go where it wants to go, depending on the panel. You see that? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not even causing it to run of tilting. So we have to use tilt for control. So you tilt to the right, you tilt that way, you tilt down, it's gonna, it's gonna change direction on you. For us right now, just to get the feel of this, I want you to drop in, a little bit of tilt, watch that edge, come down, move over, nice, this rate of speed, okay? Okay. And it's okay to go up to that edge, okay. because like we learned here, I'm watching my curve, uh -huh. and it's right there. If it was, if I was tilted too much, we could see it. 
and it would be obviously coming right down. Mm -hmm. So you watch the pattern that the machine puts out to determine exactly what your what your pad's doing. A little more polish just to show that on the camera. So, see there? Curve. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tilt to the left. See there? Yeah. There. 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 Obvious. I was on this. There. 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 So, if I'm here, I want do not want to be digging. Uh -huh. If I have to be in an odd area where I'm on an edge and have to roll off it, I want to roll off. See that? Yeah. Shooting off and up, not biting in. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it running, and I'll, I'm gonna add a little polish to the surface just for slip. You're gonna be aware of the bottom, but I'm gonna watch the bottom. Okay. And I want you to go maybe from here to here, just okay. doing the scalloping. So right. go ahead. You're gonna watch I this. Can feel it, you feel it? Yep. Is it still all controllable? Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's gonna take okay. a minute to get used to it, that's all. Okay, now you watch out. Nope. Keep a little tilt like that. There we go. Down, oh over. Very machine like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not gradually move it. Just, okay, I'm, I'm shortening it up because I know there's a curve here. Okay, stop. It takes some getting used yeah, to one of these. This is different. I have never used one of these. Well, here, come over here a little bit. This is why, um, which machine is better? Which one's the best for finishing? Which one's the fastest cutting? If they were all equally capable, one day we have a magic pad and liquid system that you can put on any machine and you get an equal result, this is still the most difficult to master okay. because of the, its capability to focus all the polishing energy on a very small area. And, and the torque action, the way it steers you. Right. The, the steering action and the ability to focus is great, uh, but it's also difficult to master. So now, you know what that felt like. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of foam these days, and unbeknownst to many people, they assume that foam is a cooler running pad versus wool. That's not true okay. in most cases. This, this actually is like using an eraser. It's got a tremendous amount of grab and as the pad squishes, it, it compresses the pores and becomes more concentrated and it starts to steer you around. So, same thing. See that bounce? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Do you need to bump your feet up a little bit or no? No, I think it's Look at the chatter and bounce. It feels pretty good right now. Okay, we got a lot of tilt, so let's go flat first. Go flat. Flat's okay. That's okay. Come this way and curve with the panel. Boom. But it's a lot different, isn't it? It is a lot different. You continue to come this way. I'll watch the bottom. You're good. You're good. A little more. When you come up to that top, come a little more. Okay. Okay. Now you can also get more rapid, right? Uh huh. You can do that. Quicker action, it gives you more slipperiness, right? Yep. You go ahead and do that. You feel it? Yep. And of course, if you if you come well, you can go left to right. Uh -huh. But again, you have more control with both arms straight up and down. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you can stop because we're getting a lot of chatter and bounce because the compound's drying up. But this is going to take a long time to master in the larger sizes. Uh -huh. And, and it's definitely more dangerous to do that on a car, so you want to use something like a test road or a fender right. to get become exceptionally good with this. But do you want to become exceptionally good with this for this area? If you can get the same job done with the random orbital or gear driven, yeah. and it's comfortable and easier to learn, we have all the proper backing plates, pads, liquids, you know, systems designed around them then do that. Right. It doesn't make you better or worse because you don't own this machine or that one or don't know how to utilize this machine or that one. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, doing. you can be yeah. exceptionally good just using one or two things and turn out world-class work. Sure. So that's awesome. about it for this part of the rotary. Okay. I know you got to get going. So. so Meredith, we finished up uh, with your little section here. Give me some thoughts, some feedback. What did you think of the machines? 
Um, it was really interesting seeing all the different types of machines that you actually have to use mm. on a car surface. You mm. know, just going to go at it with one type for every single panel or piece of, you know, tail light or headlight that you're working on. Um, so personally, um, I enjoyed working with the cordless right. uh, random orbital. I think we all did. That's it was really neat. fun. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about the cord. Yeah, cord. yeah, exactly. So that's like one less thing to worry about, especially when you're a novice like me. Yeah. Because I, you know. Of course, I'm worried about damaging the paint. You know, that's my main priority. Sure, it's your car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but throwing a cord over your shoulder is another thing to worry about. Right, so. and then the rotary, how would you feel comfortable? I know that's a little challenging. Oh, yeah, but that was the first time I used one. Yeah. So um, definitely need a lot more practice on that before I would feel comfortable using it on a car again. <laughs> well, we have a couple of hours. Kevin and I are going to finish this up. I know you have a life. It's Sunday night <laughs> at 7 o'clock or whatever it is. We're going to work through the night, get this car perfect. I know you have work tomorrow and got things to do. Awesome. So. As always, thank you for letting us use the shop and yeah. the car. Well, Very cool. You. And uh, hope you enjoyed and learned some Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Cool. Thanks, Larry. Alrighty. Good enough. There. when my bad knee comes into shape. It's killing me. That's why I have that, um, that jack. I lift the car up so I can be right here with it. This is like an awkward place. And that's all my weight's going on my good knee and this is my bad one. But that's not here nor there. If we talk a lot, does the work go faster? <laughs> Just checking. Been getting made fun of already. What's that? I am using tool. Uh, I'm using, I am using a polish, and I'm using a microfiber finishing dip. Larry's using a cutting dip and a different machine. So just goes to show that he's using his favorite setup. I'm using mine, and we'll get a very similar result. I am doing a, a quick mow down. I'm loading up a lot of paint, but I'm going to clean that in a minute. I expect a little bit of scouring, but I want to knock out this first section. All right, so on the, um, the forums and whatnot or whatever on the internet, <sighs> there is, uh, you know, a thing going around where people are saying, hey, on that last pass, that beautification pass, lift off and sort of feather you know. Well, that's been around for as long as I can remember polishing and not just in random orbital, but rotary and it sounds really good, but with, with super refined abrasive, loaded, abr and the compounds, let's, let's talk about that. Right. Non-diminishing abrasive, they take oh. the, the most refined abrasive they, they can locate, put it into a, a compound, spend two years designing this compound. Uh, or polish and we have microfibers that are you know best in the world foam pads that just, we have the best of everything and then we dial in a procedure I spend time figuring out how much speed pressure tilt all those type of things but if I don't lighten up at the end I'm not getting a great result right do you mow your lawn and then in the last few passes pump it up a couple notches <laughs> do you what? <laughs> this is really funny. Well, I'm just saying at the racetrack, if you could <laughs> right. adjust your tire pressure on the last couple laps, like right. I got to catch this guy, I'm right. in the lead or right. we're side by side. Yeah. I know what I'm going to do to get the best out of this. I'm going to drop my tire pressure. Or at, the, at the last lap? Yeah. That's, we're that's we're the, dialing in a yeah. procedure. The products are designed to be highly consistent. If your procedure delivers consistent results, why would you change it at the end? It does sound like it's reasonable. Would you, would you sand with 3,000 grit? or 5,000 grit, and then lighten up on the last few passes. No. Okay, it's not an exact analogy, but it's similar in where if, if I took this pad, primed it, blew out all the excess, right. there's still gonna be some liquid with abrasive grains stuck to the microfiber or the foam. It's consistently applied. Okay, when I turn on the machine, they're stuck in place, they're gonna move at the exact same rate and motion as the machine, mm. just like a sanding disc. Right. Why would I then not lighten up on the sanding disc? On well, the do you think it's passes? like old mentality, old thought process from diminishing abrasives? Well, like it that, could like, be. Never went away. It could be, but the other problem is, is let's say you do lighten up on the last few passes and you unload the pad. 
Uh, number one, if you, if you have the pad planted and then you lighten up, it's unplanted. Now your speed jumps up. Okay. Sure. Now, so what happened with the speed adjustment? So you're adjustment? not like squeegeeing anymore. Right. And then you, if you have a, a random orbital and the backing plate doesn't fully support the pad, which a lot of them don't, now you've got change of speed. We've shown that how the patterns change with speed and pressure. Mm. That's all gone out the window. That's changed. And now anything that was stuck to these strings that are not in complete contact or running fast are now stuck and dragging and scouring. It just goes You're basically on throwing and like on a curveball in the last second of your polish. It sounds like the right thing to do, but it's really not. And I haven't been in a situation where I thought, wow, I really wish I were to lift it up on the last few passes. And that's what I try to do with my entire polishing philosophy is to say, do I need this product? Do I need this machine? Have I sat behind the wheel of a 21 and thought, man, I sure wish I had a 15 right now. If I did, then I would get one. But if I'm happy with the 21 in, in this size pad, I'm going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. I've never had that happen. Do you understand where I'm going? Is, right. is that if there's a reason, or an actual reason, like, wow, I noticed the difference. And I think if you're doing proper procedure these days with our liquids, our pads, our machines, I don't think that is something you need to do. And I think it will be detrimental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, well, so does that a, answer it? That answers in that a, question. That's in a certainly. nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> Massive yeah. one. Okay. Get to work, huh? Excellent. I'm Back getting yelled at for talking. Hmm? <laughs> Did you notice before I put my finger on there? I didn't want to forget where I see little scratches where I, I have to go and get them later. It just kind of helps me. It's sort of like a sticky note. You know what I'm saying? I'll put a little sticky note there. Just remember right now, I got to tilt up. There's one little scratch I want to go after. Go after that guy. It's not exactly a fancy method, but it helps me remember, like a little spot right there. I'm changing pads on that same talk, topic. Let's assume that uh, I did lift up and there was some abrasives that were stuck in the pad, but now they unload at the last second and it was a diminishing abrasive. You had a diminishing abrasive that was stuck in the pad, not going anywhere, wasn't going to do anything, and then you lift up and now it momentarily adjusts and comes out of place that's not diminished. You see what I mean? You'd have a perfectly polished finish. And, and this is right at the end. Sparkly new, and I've had that. I remember that. Now that I know what was, is happening. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna blow this bad boy up. This thing's filling up fast. Yeah. I'm just running uh, three pads. I'm just gonna, then I'll blow them all out. Yeah. Cheater. Yeah, I know. the tip to touch just like I did right there because now I just put a little streak right there I just put a little bit of rubber that's on the end of this in here sort of like hitting a uh, you know the rubber on the seam between the windows or whatever so now I got to clean this out again that mark right there is from see that shininess right there so just don't be careless with that just turn it on you know and if you're sometimes I like to start the spin not exactly sure if that does anything but my habit Nothing else is coming out. Nice and clean, good to go. Good to go, Sully. No. This is challenging for long-legged people.
So I'm reverse scalloping right now. Where I was scalloping up here, now I'm scalloping with this side of the pad. See, I'm tilted up. I'll go in. Clean it up a little bit. You know what I'm gonna do? I forgot. I'm gonna do a 50 50 shot too. Everybody loves a 50 50 shot. Listen up. That's a 60 40 shot, but it'll work. Uh, Kevin, tell me a little bit about this water spritzing that you do. Okay, I'll do that uh, in just a second. But you, you generally will water spritz for two reasons. One, to create a drag. Well, it's the re when you water spritz, you create a connection or a drag between the pad and the paint. So I could go ahead and start, I could apply a compound or a polish in abundance, start to polish. And something like a microfiber pad is really good at grabbing and holding on to the abrasives. They're fresh, there's plenty there, but it's locked onto the pad. I can spray water and pull that product right back out of the pad onto the paint surface. So I can reuse that product. So, so it's actually opposite of what people would think. Hey, I'm spraying water and I'm to dilute di it. diluting it. No, you're not. And, and what's interesting too is, you know, in, in the old way of thinking is that people will tell you, hey, you need to polish until the abrasives break down in the old way, the, yeah, in the yeah. diminishing abrasives. Sure. And how do I know that? How do I know to polish until, how do I know that I polish and the abrasives are broken down? Well, it'll look oily and the surface will become clear. Right. In, 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 in a way it's saying you will be able to know that the big abrasives have broken down so fine now that you can see through them or they're not blocking Right. Really, that's that that doesn't that's not sensible. And the way you prove that out is simply take a bottle of water, spray, go across, and wow, all the all the broken down abrasive is right back on the surface. So it's not breaking down, and the oiliness is not indicating that the, the particles are so fine you can see through them. It's an emulsion break. The emulsion is all of the different liquid ingredients, all of the hard particle ingredients have separated. Mm. So some of it has gone into the pad, some of the things have evaporated, some things have dusted away, right? And so by spritzing it, it releases what's in the pad back onto the Right, pad. so you start out with an emulsion, you know, it looks creamy, you got the, let's say, oil, water, solvents, abrasives, buffering agents, things that help th keep things connected or from dusting away. All these things are mixed together and look kind of like mayonnaise consistency or milky, and it's white, and as you polish, the polishing action breaks everything apart. Now we still have the same exact ingredients, but they're not combined together anymore. They've been broken apart. Abrasives here, water here, solvents here, right? It's an mm. emulsion break. Mm. I polish, I polish, it goes clear. I know from experience that the abrasive is just fine. It's just stuck to the pad. I grab my water, I spritz, pull that those remnants out of the pad, it doesn't, it doesn't reinvigorate and make an emulsion again. It just takes what's in the pad, off of the pad, onto the surface. And it can affect the cut. It can increase the cut. Which is totally counterintuitive. Right. It can increase the cut, um, which can also increase scouring. It can change the, the um, characteristics of a pad, as an example. If you're using a rotary polisher and you have long wool strings, and you water spritz, mm. every time you water spritz, depending on the wool, if it's cotton or it's nylon or polyester or, or wool, <laughs> wool mm. uh, they have different absorbency rates. So if you get a wool pad a wool or a string pad that has a lot of absorbency, when it gets wet and you're spinning it at a high speed, the fibers start to get wet and then they stretch and they pack tighter and tighter and tighter and more compacted. Now what was once a soft, fluffy, contourable, contourable pad mm. becomes condensed and dense and tight. And that thing will just da, level. Da, 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 yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll hop yeah. if it's loaded up, but it can also really level. So plus is that they can really level if that's what you want and cut rapidly. 
The drawback is gonna leave a lot of string marks possibly and chatter and hop and bounce. So there's always a plus and a minus. Mm. Yeah, but um, yeah, water spritzing is really good for a lot of things, but a lot of times it's being used improperly and someone thinks, well, I'll just add water and it'll take the haze away because I, I heard that on the internet. I, I read your articles. It's like, well, you didn't dice, decipher what I was saying because it will cause scouring in that situation. The other reason you would water spritz is that you are using such a small quantity of liquid. Let's say a polish. Let's say I'm working on the most sensitive haze prone paint. Mm -hmm. And I've found out that by using too much polish, it's giving me too much cut. Mm -hmm. So I really just want the, the liquid emulsion of the polish, not, not the, the abrasive. Because yeah. I, want, I want the pad to slip and not bite, right? I called you years ago when I was doing right. my pour show. Yeah. I basically went from a percentage down basically to water. Right. I just started polishing right. with water. So there's times if you happen to use such a diminutive size of, of polish, I mean, we're talking just the tiniest droplet, and we're, we're, we're preaching single one-way passes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's pretty small. That is never going to transfer across the entirety of this pad mm -hmm. in one single one-way pass. Right. Right. So obviously we don't do that very often. We do sometimes use that quantity or way less in some water and shake it up and we're spritzing. Yeah, that's what I was doing. But if if we were using just you know just I'd say hey just you you know the the proverbial pea size drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cut that in a quarter a fourth of a pea size drop and take that quantity and put some at 12 o'clock, two o'clock, four, six, eight, ten, at the outer edge of the pad because we're gonna do one pass and we have no time for that stuff to migrate outward, right? Right. I want you to water spritz because, or, or spritz the pad because that's gonna help spread that in that singular one-way pass. So on one hand, we use water spritzing when you have an abundance of abrasive in your pad to pull it back out or right. just tighten strings up. On the other hand, the other extreme, we use it because we're going to be short cycling with a diminutive amount of polish, and we need it to spread rapidly. It's interesting. Yeah, that is that is yeah. huge. But th there are two entirely different reasons to do that. So if you happen to be chasing your tail final polishing, but you're using a regular quantity of polish, and then you water spritz, you've just ramped up the cut. You've just changed the characteristics of the polish as it was designed to work. Right. You've just changed. You made it, made it worse. So don't water spritz as an automatic. Use it, you should be using it when you know why you're using it. Don't just assume that's just a normal thing that you do. Mm -hmm. Know why you're doing it because it's not a normal thing. You don't normally have to do that. Right. The, the liquids we're using, the pads we're using, the systems we're using, they're designed to do certain things. And you are really changing what they were designed to do by introducing a water spritz. Right. So I'm not, it seems like I'm the guy that says, don't do anything that's orthodox. No, I'm saying do everything orth orthodox, but consider these things that we've found out. When the paint is not playing normal. Right. When the paint's really mm -hmm. soft or when yeah. there's something weird, when the paint's telling you something funky yeah. that doesn't work. Do what the system says to do first. Right. If it's not working for you, let's make small incremental adjustments and go to, the, if you have to go to the extremes, we have that available. Right. We know Lots that. and lots of liquid, the little liquid, water, there's yep. all these little variants right. that you can use. Yep. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to work. Yep, back to work. All right, a few minutes ago, I was working with Kevin, and he grabbed my hand as I was polishing because I was having some issues doing it, and I think I, I just had like sort of an aha moment. It's getting late, as you can probably imagine. We've been working on this for a while, and I want to describe something and write something down, but I'm sort of, I don't know, whatever, reenacting a little bit of what we just did off camera, which was real. So. I started polishing this section. I'm having a little bit of issue here. And so basically what I was doing is tilting and then going flat, tilting, going flat, tilting. And, and that concept was wrong uh, because I didn't notice something until you explained it to me. So polish the way, show me the, what okay. you were doing before. Just and show, then, what? show me what you're doing and then I want you to give it to me and then grab my hand okay. and I want to explain something. Yeah. So I am, there's a lot of polish on here right now. Right. I just loaded it, so we'll spread it a bit. And I'm gonna, I'm coming up, and I'm pressing down and contouring. Up, down. So what I was doing was up. scalloping, 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 but I wasn't tilting enough. So give me the polisher. Okay. And so when you were, when you handed it to me, now grab my hand. Now. Grab it right there. Right there. 
so I was over, up, down. So what I was feeling when you were showing, when you were when you were doing that with me, was I thought that you were making me tilt too much, too far. When I'm saying, okay, it's Kevin Brown. I'm sure there's there's a logic here, and I started tilting more as opposed. I, I was basically before I was going uh, scallop, and then flat. Show scallop. Us. Show me. I was doing like this. Scallop. Ah, okay, got it. You see? You're, you're coming in. Okay, you're coming in, and then it's far. See that? Look at that. See that? Come under. Right. You're you're dragging, and as you come in, you're trying to tilt. And look at it. it's 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 twisty, bouncy. It's inconsistent. Right. But then when I was coming off, I wasn't going into right. the so into what the. We're, what we're doing is let's just get it up there right. and then drag. Yeah, I felt as if you were keeping the nose of the machine going down too far. And then when when it started to work, I realized, okay, here's what I did. I'm this. If you look at the where, where Ryan is, if you look at the slope of the door, are you getting that? Yeah, yeah, See I this? Really so if you look at it here, I, I drew it on a, yep. you know, on a piece of paper. Does that make sense? Are you getting that? Yes. Okay, so it's on my little sketch pad. Basically, this face, I'm gonna get the, I'll get the pad. All right, so if this is the door right here, I was going in. It's a little bit extreme, of course. I was going in and tilting down. Can you see me here? Sorry, Ryan. I wanted Ryan to see. Uh, Kevin to see. Yeah. Oh, so perfect. I, as I was going in this direction, I was tilting in, tilting in, and getting this. But I started the yeah. But I was going flat here, so I was missing the section yeah. right in here. Yeah. And so when I was feeling, when Kevin put his hand on me before off camera, and we're just reenacted it now, I felt like, uh, like you were pushing me too hard, yeah, going. But, but you were coming in, and this thing is swinging and digging and digging and pushing. You're moving this way, and you're and it's digging. Well, we're, we we reversed that and said, hey, move it this way, and it's not digging. Right, and then you you seem to have more downward pressure for longer. Yeah. Where I was coming out of the scallop earlier, you I, I was going flatter quicker. Yeah, you, we need to have consistency of pressure. Yeah, he, he's. I'm exaggerating. Yeah. He was going like this with the nose. I'm exaggerating it. I was going in and then flat. Yeah. In and then I'm flat. Just he's going to get like this. Up there and start there, but you can't just on these type of machines. You can't just go oh, because it starts to ramp up speed right. and spin. So you have to. Get it up there, and then start your action. R right. Versus this, bah, and it's spinning and wiggling and bouncing, trying to throw the pad off, and you crash land at 50 or, you know rotations. That's that's not good. Right. So the goal for us was to get it up there and then start to work on the way down. All right. So my my aha moment or my aha moment over here was, I have to look at the panel as it is right now on the side. I have to look at it this way visually you know in my mind to think hey how am i going to see horizontally yeah so like I've, I've taken the door like this like this door and i'm going in my mind and now i know if i see these ridges because you were saying like i didn't even realize how voluptuous There's or what so, uh, we have so many shadows in here right I, I put lighting it's... and then you said put your head against the thing i'm like oh my gosh i didn't i mean yeah. i knew this little point obviously and, and here's the telltale so here's how you can discern if you have the pad planted and we always talk about the pad planted but I'm saying if you know you gotta have if you have a six inch pad and a 21 millimeter throat that's almost seven inch pattern we should see if it was perfect consistent a seven inch width of polishing if we don't right sh show it wrong again okay I can outline this look at that it's missing right in there see that yeah so we have to go in there and say okay Get it up there. You, you, see the, you see the you see the nose like this? Like it's if, already better. Look. If the nose, if, if this was the if this was the flatness of the pad, this is what I'm what I'm learning here. And that's a wicked shadow. Flatness of the pad. He's going in like this, right? And then coming back down. It's yes. like this. This. I, I wish we could draw it. I didn't even think about that until you just said that. See, I was going in like this, flat. I didn't even realize there was a bump. You were coming in. And then trying to scallop, but you can't scallop because boom, you're hitting. You're coming in, and you were trying to scallop. You can't because this pad. Look, you're coming uh, in, and you knew you had to move. Right. So you were trying to keep it on there and move, but you can't. So I'm saying, well, let's. So just, the scallop is going down. Yeah, let's get it up and, and reverse scallop. So let's get it up there. Uh, now we drag. That, that, that's the part where I was feeling you. I was feeling you do that. I'm going, what the heck is he doing right now? 
trying to do the least amount of impact on the way up and do all the work on the way down. Pattern. Huge. Almost, you know, I could work on it. I don't want to take too much paint away, but. Uh, boom, 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 boom. See, I'm rolling over to keep the pad from swinging off. See that? Keep the pad loaded. Get up there and come down. Keep the pad loaded. Come down. Pattern's really good. And and then you, you maybe think more about the cushioning of the pad. Like the, the more cushion you have, the more you can kind of sure. contour yeah. to this voluptuous. So to me, the bottom line is if I look at this, if I, my first thing I should do is look at the door from the side and mm -hmm. kind of visually take this door and go whoop, and flip it for me just mentally, great, flip yeah. it sideways and go like, like hey, how flat, map. Th exactly. Yeah. And then I can say, okay, how am I going to attack this? Cause I honestly, I just went and I dropped my bags, like you know the saying, drop my bags, Boom. I want to attack it. I didn't it. realize that right from here to here is convex. Yes? Con it concave like, is in. No, concave is in here, yeah. but in, from here to here is convex. Yeah. It, pop, it pops back out. Yeah, we always get good results on this because it's pressurizing the Right, right through here. I was killing it. <laughs> right, yeah. And everything's planted properly. You right. It's easy to keep the same pressure here, 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 here. That's when you get in these areas that you don't. You have always, we always have scours and mist up and scratches in there. And we think, well, let's just go to a smaller pad, which we could do. Right. But you and I know that it's very difficult to to mimic or, or replicate the power and the cutting speed of a large stroke machine with a large pad. And the other thing is, is yes, with a larger stroke machine, you can get a taller pad that's more squishy. And even, so what if it absorbs five or six orbit, you know, of, the, of the orbit diameter? You still got 15 or 14 or 13. You put this on the same pad on an eight millimeter throw machine and it absorbs six. Yeah. You got a net of two. Now mm. you're buzzing, doing nothing, and that's what that's what the machines have that uh, reputation of, ah, oh, it just buzzes and creates haze. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't yeah. sit there and buzzes. Well, the pad was too tall or too wide, too cushioning. But we can get away with a lot with these in these kind of situations. And we don't need to have a lot of speed to get a good cut. Total control. Okay, close on this one. So for me, you know, we've been doing this for a couple of hours. We got the hood to do, and then we're gonna call it. Right? It's been multiple days of detailing, but long time on this car. I'm excited. It just, I don't even know how to put into words. I guess I'm getting a little bit tired here, but when you grabbed my hand, uh, that was like a huge, it's like a going with an instructor. Like you can be driving forever, but like you, you bring an instructor and you're like, oh my God, I didn't even think of it this way. Yeah. And, for, and for whatever reason, I'll never forget you grabbing it and me thinking, to, thinking about when you were grabbing it, like, what the heck is he doing? Like, why are you pushing my nose of the machine? Why are you pushing my I was nose fighting, down? You were fighting I was me, fighting you. Like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, why are you pushing my nose down? Like, wh right. I, I don't. But really, you can do this gently, like I just did. And, yeah, and get it up there. It's because I was fighting you because right. my brain was like, right. what, you were, which is exactly what I'm what I was so looking for. As much as we're trying our, our best to tr to relay technique, there's nothing like. Yeah, the hands-on part. That, I, I, I'm not gonna ever forget that. Right. I, don't, I know we're having like a little existential, whatever. Like no, to me, I was like, I, I, I couldn't believe it because I thought you were. Anyways, I just, I was like, what? Basically, what the hell is this guy doing? What are you doing to me right now? You're pushing the thing down, but now I, I, I'll. So from now on, my bottom line is, sorry, Ryan, I'll wrap up. Take the door panel. That's what the door looks like from the side. And for me, mentally, this is just what, what works for me because you grabbed me. You know, touch was big. I'm gonna take it in my mind shifted sideways and then i'm going to have like yeah. a little topography well, you, map in my mind yeah. and then i'll be able now i'll go like oh yeah, I, I don't want to keep going but i hate to move you but move <laughs> you don't have to go that way if you can come at it because see part of the problem is the machine's off there, right you're trying to tilt it you don't want to bash so get it sideways right now we're not fighting. Look at that. Look at the difference that is. Totally smooth, huh? Look at the width of that pattern. Look at that. Way better. Just by changing 90 degrees on the machine, I have much better ergonomics. 
so you'll see me get on the ground and lay down in some situations. But look at that, just by changing that angle. Look at that, I can come up like this. Boom, hey there, coming up. Boom, look at how wide that is. Yeah. That's yep. even bigger than the other. Never again am I going to look at the panel as just a panel. Yeah. I'm looking at as what is the topography, what is the voluptuousness, if that's a word, of it, and how can I attack that? In, yeah, in yeah. It's almost perfect. So that was a combination of how you attack it, but even in this case, more how you're holding the machine. Sideways, vertical, right? Bonk, bonk, versus can whittle it. Okay, uh, the front here, as we mentioned before, has a clear bra. Um, this particular one is really old uh, and doesn't look very good. So normally I would tell a customer, hey, I'm not gonna really polish this, it's not worth it, we need to remove it. In this case, um, she just doesn't have time to do that. So we're just gonna polish it out. What we're doing on it, um, and again, use a lot of caution if you decide to do this, I'm not recommending you do it. You have to know uh, what each manufacturer recommends, if it's 3M, Expel, or whatever it is, right? So we tested this out and we're just sort of giving it a little pop, a little shine so that when the rest of the car looks amazing, when Kevin's done over here and we finish all the little spots, there's no weird contrast. So what I'm doing is increasing the quantity of polish uh, uh, to an extreme amount. So not necessarily shock and awe that we've done before in the past. Uh, we're just adding a lot because the old dead oxidized rubber and plastic that's coming off the clear bra is jamming into the pad. So we have to, as we said in the, in the previous episodes, we have to up the percentage of liquid because the amount of residue that's coming off per given amount of space is also increased. If we didn't, it would stick. So if I just used a little dot and I did, you know, uh, a two by two section, let's call it, it's gonna stick and I'll never be able to wipe it off because there's so much residue on there. So normally, let's say, use a dot or two. In this case, I am loading up the pad. It might get a little messy, but it's helping suspend all that residue. Again, we're just doing a light polish. I'm not going to town, I'm not freaking out. But uh, did you get any 50-50 shots of this yet? No. Sully? All right, so I'll, I'll finish this, uh, this side and you'll you clearly see that there's tons of scratches over here and none over here. And I think for the purposes of Meredith, it's absolutely perfect. So let's finish this up and uh, close out this car. Lots of liquid. See that? Likewise, it's also nice to not have a cord here. It's pretty cool, otherwise you gotta throw it over your shoulder, sometimes it lays over the hood. That is loaded up with junk. So you'll probably be able to see this spray all over the place. Mm -hmm. I'm get my face out of the way, here we go. Uh. Trying to angle it so you can see it. You see it? No, it's not on the first floor. Okay. There we go. It's just getting me nasty, it's getting me dirty. I took my glasses off, that's why. Where my glasses go? I don't know. I get glasses somewhere. Anyways, wipe this off. Excellent. You wanna see a before and after real quick before I finish it? Yeah. Let me get my... Uh, and my glasses. You getting angry having to redo my work? Can you see over here? Scratches before and I gotta, you know, I'm starting to take them out over there so I don't want to 50 the scratches there. No scratches. Or minimal scratches. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, so we finished Meredith's car and it's looking pretty good. We spent a long time on it, but yep. that's how it goes. 
What do you think, you know, what are your uh, final words on this particular episode? Well, in this case, we were trying to teach technique. So right. the goal was to teach technique, not to make this the perfect car. Yeah, Pebble and, Beach car. And we did make it look nice, but yeah. she's going to be driving it. And so we're satisfied with the results. And I think she got a lot of uh, information out of it as well. I know that I certainly did, especially in this last mm -hmm. little part. I had like a you yeah. know, moment where, again, you take that topography of the, of the door or the panel or whatever, and for me, I'm gonna turn it horizontal, mm -hmm. see that, and then I'll know, okay, how the pad is gonna flow. I, yeah. ju I just, I kinda did one of our, you know, when we do our final here, like I kinda dropped my bags and, and I went in and I wanted to attack it and I didn't mm -hmm. slow down, so. It was great that we caught it and right. we actually did a third uh, right procedure which would just start here and go that way for the finishing and it, it, the pad fit perfect a little bit of tilt pulled it it wouldn't have removed the defects we needed to sure but for the final couple passes with almost no polish it was perfect right so we finished this episode this was an incredible amount of work it was we knew it was going to be yeah you and I have been working on this for mm -hmm. a long time so right off the bat I want to thank you for spending time thank and doing you for all this stuff. having me was, this was huge um, I think hopefully people are enjoying this and I, I do think it's changing the way people are detailing and mm -hmm. their jobs and their income and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's a lot of trickle down good things that came from this. I know we're exhausted. It's the middle of the night right yeah. now, but what would you say as the final, you know, top three things or whatever you want to call it? Okay. What, what, are you, what are you saying to the camera, to the people? What's, what's important? I would say first and foremost, you know, adjust your mindset. Right. We talked about that over and over don't need to knock it out of the park. We want to protect the paint. We want to make it look nice, but we want to keep as much on there as possible. And if, if, it, if a scratch is too deep, that's okay. Leave right. it there. It, it's not as bad as going through and burning the paint and have to pay for a reshoot. Um, you know, so that's the number one thing is because it's so abundant that I can make this perfect and three-step jobs and uh, 50 hours. It's okay to listen to the customer, let's say a Meredith, and if yeah. she wanted what she wanted, we did what she wanted. Yep. That equals success. It's okay in my, to do a, a, an work. all in one, a cleaner wax, yeah. a mist and wipe. It, it's okay. To, that's totally acceptable. That's what I used to do all the time to make a living. That's what detailing was. Right. Bring it to the expectation of the customer. They told you what they want. You did it. They loved it. Great. Bye. Next car. Didn't have to knock it out of the park every time. Right. So, number two, what would you say? Uh, would be to. Wait. What was it? Mm. Give me a second. Number two was, hang for a second, guys. Didn't blank right out of my mind. Oh, to go back and rewatch it. There's a lot of Dude, information. We, even, we couldn't even remember because. <clears throat> Ready? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Uh, and number okay. three is um, enjoy. enjoy. Action. All right, so for number two, what would that be? I would say that we are dealing with an immense quantity of information that is for sure. and a lot of topics yeah. and some of them are very in depth and technical. And so I would say that don't get discouraged that you don't remember it all. I mean, it, there's a lot there. So just keep in mind that you can go back and rewatch this. Yeah. And I would recommend that if something that you really want to learn is I'm just not getting it. What has worked for me in the past is to watch it again or read it again or read it again. And I'm told all the time on the phone, Hey Kevin, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a visual learner. Right. You know, I got to see it like, well, everybody is. Right. Two eyes, you know, one brain. Yeah. But until you can learn to envision, you know, see what's on the screen and then take it and say, okay, let me think about it and focus, it's going to be difficult to learn these things. But regardless, you can always go back to that that ser that, that video in the series and, and watch it again. Right. And I, I encourage people to get a test panel as well. I think that's huge. You can lot burn it and do yep. all kinds of stuff, have that's fun, right. you know, sand it, that kind of thing. Finally, in the last two seconds of us if we can stand huh. up any longer, because this has been a long week. Yeah. What's the last thing to say to people? I would say enjoy what you're doing. If you have a day where things aren't going right and you're getting frustrated, stop, hold off. Uh, if you're just burned out, you, you overload of products, pads, machines, it's costing too much money, it's taking too much time, I don't know what I'm doing, take a break. It, it's something you should enjoy doing. Uh, it's supposed to be fun. Doing. Yeah, and, and you do better work when, when you're, true. you're calmed and relaxed and focused rather than getting nervous and skittish and, and frustrated. Frustration, you know, it kills the end result. So just enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it that day, wait, do it another day. Absolutely. So as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. This was a massive series, a lot of work, probably the hardest thing I've ever had to write in terms of our series. Um, I'm hoping to do a 300 series, a 400 series. We got a lot more coming. 
Um, but again, thanks to Kevin Brown. He doesn't want me to say it, but visit mm. his website at buffdaddy.com. Support him. He's got a lot of content on there. You guys know where I am, ammonyc.com. Click on training. We have beginner mm -hmm. and now this advanced series. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at larry at ammonyc.com or leave comments below. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.